It's time for Windows Weekly, the first episode of 2014. And, of course, Paul and Mary Jo are going to take a look at what's ahead for Microsoft in the new year. Stay tuned. Windows Weekly is next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therod and Mary Jo Foley, episode 343, recorded January 2nd, 2014. Throttled. Windows Weekly is brought to you by Audible.com to download a free audiobook of your choice. Go to audible.com slash windows. It's time for Windows Weekly. She's on the fun, ladies. <laughs> Hello. Windows Weekly is on the air with Paul for what? And Melly Joe for we. I was up a little late on New Year's Eve. Yeah. yeah no, you're forgiven. Um... But I feel good. I'm I'm really glad to be back. We had so much fun. And thank you, Paul Thorat of the Super Site for Windows, winsupersite.com, and Mary Jo Foley of allaboutmicrosoft.com for being our first guests at uh, what was early your time, like 7 a.m. East Coast yep. time on New Year's Eve. Thank you. And then, Paul, I don't know if you saw, but Mary Jo Foley yeah. made me drink beer. A terrible woman. I forced him. <laughs> and it was good. This is yes. the thing that kills me. <laughs> so, do you did you uh, did you tell uh, Paul what beers that uh, we tried, Mary Jo? Because there was some I think Paul would yeah. like. There were some hoppy ones that I know yeah. Paul doesn't like hoppy. Um, but there were some there were some ones he would have liked. Oh yeah, uh, there was some good stuff. Belgian he style. He had a Creek lambic. Paul would have liked a lot. Really? No, does he yeah, like? He would like. You that. would like cherry oh, yeah. flavored oh, beer. Yeah, it yeah, tastes yeah, like yeah. fruit punch. I bought a bunch of stuff like that, um, and we have, in fact, we haven't uh, had all of it yet. But a bunch of different, really fruity kind of lambic-y, They have different names, but you know, sours this, and all kinds of this stuff. This was uh, had cherries in it, right, Mary Jo? Or you had a different one? Yeah, I was drinking a different one, but also a sour. It was good. Uh, I'm not it saying was. it was bad. It just wasn't. It didn't. It wasn't beer. <laughs> <It> was <laughs> no, and then else. we ended with a big porter oh, or that stout. Was beer. That was yeah, beer. that was like chocolatey. Like I had a bourbon kind of barrel. It, it tasted like chocolate. It was like drinking it chocolate, not milk, chocolate bread or cake or something. It was good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, thank you and hello and welcome to the first show of 2014 for me and for uh, Paul and Mary Jo. And the last show <laughs> on a Thursday <laughs> morning. <laughs> Because right after this, next week we're moving you to Wednesday at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Yeah, Eastern. that's right. 1900 UTC. Yep. Uh, but I'm glad to see we are here just kind of for old time's sake. I'm going to be sitting here on Thursday afternoons wondering why no one's <laughs> calling me. Did, Paul, did we always do the show Thursday? Was it always Thursday afternoon? Yeah, I think so. So this yeah. is the first time we've ever changed the time. I believe so. It's bad programming to do that. And you know, you see how networks always kill TV shows by moving from slot to slot and stuff like that. It's always a bad idea because people get used to it. But This is what happened to community. Yes, exactly. Although I hear it's back better than ever. Yeah. Now that what's his name is back online. Dan Harmon, look at me with knowing something about you TV. You know. I'm so embarrassed by that. <laughs> Why did I say that? Out loud? Somebody told me he did a really, I think Brian Brushwood told me he did a really good podcast during the you know couple of years he wasn't at Community in which he was just right. bitchy as hell. Just complaining the whole time <laughs> yeah. about how it works. Yeah. 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 See that. <laughs> anyway, let us uh, get to the news. The title of our show today, Snowmageddon. Because any minute now, uh, Mary Jo in yeah. New York and Paul in Boston will be swamped with snow. Oh, my God. I think Paul already is. There he is. There it is. It's falling down in New York. Now, that's I mean, Boston. Bo Boston. Yep. That looks so pretty. New York, not yet. Doesn't it look pretty when that happens? Yeah, it's great. I wish I was looking at it from California. Yeah. <laughs> it's so pretty. It looks so white and <sighs> clean, and everything gets yeah. quiet because it's like a giant mm. blanket over the landscape. The snow plows and the well later in the day, <laughs> you know. The worst we went, thing I, it wasn't supposed to be bad today. We went out in it like idiots, you know. And then I wish I had never done that. I, it was just so awful out. What? Your kids still, driving around. Your, your kids haven't become cynical and bitter like you, right? They still oh enjoy. Oh my god, it. no. You know what? I, you okay, want to do so? Snow this is angels. completely off topic, but I have to tell. 
my son has uh, like a season's pass to the local ski area, which is just a hill, not a mountain, you know, but it's very close. Yeah, we had one of those in Providence, too. <laughs> it's neat, right? No, but it's good because yeah. you can go. It's handy. Going, yeah, it's a short, and, it's a um, short, short We had a day this, I think it was Sunday. It rained all day long, like really heavy rain. If this had been snow, we would have gotten three feet, of, four feet of snow. And uh, he was out in the rain with his buddy, and they were the only people on this hill except the people who worked there for the entire day. And I sort of, I give him credit for that, you know, for being young and being excited about stuff. And, yeah. and I vaguely want to cut his Achilles tendon. <laughs> Just a form of punishment. Daddy, daddy. Right? He wakes you up at 3 in the morning. It's snowing. Yeah, he went out. Yeah, it's the same thing yesterday. He, went, he was there until it closed. That you know, nice, youthful exuberant. Of course, he is too young to have to shovel it, right? Oh, no, he shovels. Oh, and he still loves it. Yeah. Wow. Yep. That's great. You don't have one of them electric shovels, do you? No. A no, snowblower. No what do they well, we get a little Fisher Price snowblower, and um, it works great if it doesn't snow much. But <laughs> it's great with flurries. <laughs> yeah, you push it into snow, and then it jams and shuts down. <laughs> nice. So you spend like thirty minutes getting it going for the first time. I'm surprised iRobot hasn't made a snow Roomba. Like a Roomba, yeah, a Snoomba. Snoomba. <laughs> <laughs> Those don't. They they barely could pick up dust. I don't think they do so well with snow. Especially this stuff. Mary Jo, you don't have to handle it in any way. You live in an apartment building, right? The, the super gets right. that, right? Or the, or the, yep. the doorman, yep. whoever it is. We just go out and it's magically cleared somehow. <sighs> and, nice. and still, yet, you probably hate snow too. No, I love the snow. Yay, totally see? Snow. I think it's directly correlated to whether you have to clean it up or not. And I also don't have to drive in it since I live in New York. Yeah, driving so in that, it's not fun. no. The only bad part is when it melts here, the puddles are astronomic. <laughs> right. You step into a puddle and it's about four feet and your whole leg goes in. And Snow's great until it melts. Yeah. <laughs> That's really That the was truth. like the, uh, the one funny thing that Chevy Chase did on his short-lived TV show where he did one of those walk of fame things where he puts his hands in the cement and then mm -hmm. he fell forward his whole body went into the sidewalk <laughs> because it was like five feet deep. That's, that's what New York yeah, is like in the winter because you can see a puddle and it's you like that know. should be an inch deep. You like, don't know. No My galoshes go this side. No idea. Snow yeah. goes this, water goes you this You can just be lost in it. You know? <laughs> Nothing like a puddle. Giant puddle. Yeah. Giant. Well, but the leaves are still blowing here, and it's a chilly 60 degrees. Yes. I, look, your hair seems to be blowing you a little. Can see, you can see. You can see. I don't know what's... <laughs> Let's, I'll use this as a, my headset says a bandana. Actually, I should, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but know. to bring this conversation full circle, I will try to show you that this is a, a pint glass that I got in Phoenix oh, in neat. the late 1990s. Yeah. It says like, Thorot. A, a brewery that used to exist there yeah. called uh, McFarland's. Yeah. And in here, which you can't really see, it says, this I'll defend, which was their kind of slogan. And it was uh, from Phoenix, Arizona. But somehow this glass, which has etched their logo into it, has exist it has made it like through you know 15 16 years it's amazing and you bring this anyway, up why because we were talking about beer oh beer oh go okay it does have your name <laughs> this on is it like Did a you... pint glass from this brewery we used to visit regularly local well, it must have been really regularly Did they they engraved your name on it. yes yeah we were big fans <laughs> this is like rattle and hum having the mary joe foley yes. mug this is right, you, right. you had to earn I mean, that i'm sure but it's from arizona i haven't lived in arizona since <laughs> 1999. <laughs> oh, so it is kind of yeah. old. Yeah. Isn't it funny how some glassware makes it a day and then some unaccountably right. just goes forever? I was so sad stuff. I couldn't get my video working on New Year's Eve because Rattle and Hum let me take my mug out that oh. night to bring it on the show. Because I told them I was oh. doing the, the New Year's show. Oh, and I had it here, but they made me bring it back. So oh. I don't well, know. Yeah. So they retain ownership <laughs> despite the fact that your name is on it? Yeah. Well, I don't understand that at all. It's not good to them. I mean, they can't. Do you have <laughs> trouble uh, with Untapped on New Year's Eve? Yeah, Untapped, untapped crashed like under the, the load. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everybody I was checking check beers in. in. So yeah, typical. Just... You know, people get to New Year's Eve. I don't know what beer to get. Let me go check on the web. Nope. <laughs> not tonight. <laughs> yeah, people I know. ended up drinking Heineken. The whole... That was the funniest thing. We start this beer tasting segment, and Mary Jo says, do you like beer, Steve? And he said, oh, yeah, yeah, I love beer. She said, what do you drink? I drink Heineken Light. Yikes. Yeah. He yeah. actually said that. No, and then Mary Jo he said, did. no, I said, do you like beer? Yikes. <laughs> it's Dutch. Mm, he, liked, he liked the Lambic. He, he thought that was awesome. Yeah, a beer digger would. It's like saying, I don't drink yeah. wine, and then giving them, uh, you know. Heineken is right. uh, Europe's Budweiser, Leo. 
It's the Boone's Farm of beers. This <laughs> lambic is. We went on the tour of the Heineken factory in uh, Amsterdam this summer. Is it better in 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 the Netherlands? No, it's no. terrible. Still bad there. And now. we uh, we didn't drink any of the free giveaways. And my my <laughs> my kids said, uh, you know, I don't want to. You know, my, Mark, my son was like, I don't want to go on this tour. We can't drink beer anyway. And I said, No, don't worry about it. This stuff is water. You can drink it if you want. <laughs> <laughs> It's delicious, and all the little Dutch children drink it. I felt terrible because, <laughs> well, I'm not even going to bring it up. We had a little Dutch boy come on the show uh, during New Year's Eve, and I felt terrible. And I said something inappropriate, of course, knowing me. And, well, uh, and had then, you been on TV for 27 hours at the time? And uh, was, no, I'm not going to. I have no excuse. But I said something terrible, and then the, then his father showed. It's like, like you know, you're, you know, he's not just him here. It's like, oh God. All right, let's uh, enough of enough of enough of uh, this tomfoolery. Let us. Yes, I should mention we do have an audible ad a little later on. So, Paul, okay. ready your book recommendation, the first book of the new year. Um, but you know, we talked last week about Microsoft. This was the third twenty thirteen was the banner year for Microsoft. So much stuff, so much amazing stuff. But um, what is twenty fourteen going to portend? That's I the question. I think it's going to be another. Year of insanity. We know there'll be a new CEO because we've, <laughs> we've been told that. We do. We do. Do you think a I'm new CEO, CEO will change the company much or will they pick somebody that's going to maintain? Uh, you know, whoever comes in has to basically agree with what the plan is now that's in place, I think. Because the board, the search committee, they're all kind of backing the way they've reorganized right. the company into the one Microsoft and all that. That's so, going to narrow it down, though, a little bit. I mean, not everybody would... would, would necessarily sign on under those conditions right and you know there are all these people speculating maybe um bill and steve will step down off the board and if that happens maybe that will allow for bigger changes but there's been no indications from anyone i know that that's about to happen yeah so yeah uh yeah that i think it's gonna that's gonna start the year off probably i i'm betting they're gonna name the ceo in january not not next week obviously since that's ces timing but I'd I'd say early soon. Uh, early in the year soon. Yep, soon. Um, and who are our candidates these days? I said probably Satya Nadella and Stephen or er, Elop. The insiders seem yep. to me to be more likely than an outsider. Alan Mulally is still in the running. <laughs> it's like I know. Generalissimo Francisco Franco. It does not go away. <laughs> He's not going he, away. So he and never stepped forward and said no, like the board wanted nope. the Ford board wanted him to do. Nope, he well, never that, did. Well, that just fu that fuels the rumors. Yep, it does. It does. I didn't and you say know, no. You know, yet. it was a crazy no, and, and there was a crazy rumor the week of Christmas that a couple of people mentioned to me because I don't know if you guys caught this, but the CEO of Hyundai North America abruptly stepped down, and no one knows why. And people were saying, "What if they're going <gasps> to pick this guy?" Hyundai, it's like a Ford, only cheaper. It's like a Exactly. I'm like, wait. And the guy, the guy who who it is, his name is John Krafcik, K R A F C I K. He actually is an engineer by profession. So of mm. course that started some crazy speculation. Uh, I haven't heard he's actually was on he on list, any lists prior to quitting? Mm -mm. No, no. But it, I, as it just shows you is going to be so... the next CEO of Ford. <laughs> nice. I heard that everybody heard who that. quits just like okay, they must be in the running. Everybody's in the running. Paul and I are in the running. I right. would like to run Microsoft. I feel like I'd be better in a Darth Vader type role. <laughs> Thank you, you know, like maybe Mary Jo could run the company and I could be like the enforcer. Chainsaw Paul Therat. Yeah. You've been throttled. <laughs> You've been throttled. Oh, I like it. Nice. I like it. So is it is it really serious that we could really see Alan Mulally? I mean, I would love Alan Mulally as a CEO because he's a great CEO, but jeez oh, Louise, yeah. he's... He's um, kind of old. He's getting older by the day. Yeah. I think every time we talk about him, he, he's 78 years old now. That man well, is 87. Great. Uh, How old is he really? Uh, you know, I, I think he's 68. He's 60. Isn't he? Yeah. yeah. Late, Late 60s. 60s. He was ready, and uh, he was ready to retire. He was planning, last time I talked to him, I don't talk to him anymore. 
he, uh, you know, he's. I guess that one time I brought the laptop into the meeting and I, sh and I streamed it. I w he never again. He'll talk to me. But <laughs> yes, right. you were banned. Just never learn. <laughs> never learn. Did you say it's like riding a bike? <laughs> <laughs> Just feels so good in my hands. Uh, no, I for you know I I, I I guess if I were going, I talked to him last time. I talked to him was at CES last year. I guess if I went to CES this year, I could talk to him. But uh, at the time last year, he said I'm prep. He, he said I'm preparing to retire. I am I am grooming my successor. I am ready to move on from Ford. Uh, maybe he meant retire and take a you know kind of a part time job running Microsoft. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> well, a little company. Year, I mean, yeah. Did they know? Did we know? But we didn't know about this last year, right? I mean, no, no. no it was way know. before Balmer said anything. I don't think we would have been talking about him and Microsoft. No, I think he year. genuinely wanted to to get out of the business. Yeah. And, and, you know, he. I think he even said he wants to uh, spend time with his grandkids. It was great. But he has a home in Seattle. Wait a minute. What? He has a home. He in does. Seattle. Is it a palatial estate? Uh, I don't know. i unlike you. I've never met the guy. Uh, but he does have a home in Seattle. He because he used to run Boeing, right? So. Right. Yeah. That's right. Uh, he. I mean, that's he, he, that was something his that previous feels job was Seattle. Yep. Right. Yeah. Hmm. I know. So uh, you know, if if it does end up being him. Um, I could see it being something like this. He's positioned as the guy who takes over in the short term while they're grooming some other candidates who aren't quite ready yet, and he's going to be their mentor. I could see them kind of framing it that way. Not saying I agree, but I could see them do that. Hmm. Hmm. Then and then who, and then the groom, grooming it for Sacha? Maybe for Sacha, or maybe Elop. for Tony Bates. Tony Bates. I think right, for some guy. reason, I don't think Tony Bates, I think of Tony Bates as an insider. Of course, he nominally is, but mm -hmm. Skype is recently acquired and has been autonomous right. within Microsoft. I don't know how much Tony Bates, I, well, I guess they transferred him over, didn't they? To Right. now, And now he's running business development, which is a pretty responsible position uh, and also the evangelism team. So he's doing a new job right now inside Microsoft. And, and if you notice, he never is allowed to talk to the press. I, I can't remember the last time he was allowed to talk to anybody. I think that's because a lot of the people in the press actually use Skype, and we'd have some rather embarrassing questions <laughs> to ask him. Skype has gotten yeah. worse and worse. In fact, today, uh, because we have so many problems with Skype and Mary Jo, we're trying a little experiment. We've put Mary Jo on the left, and we'll, yes. see, we'll right. see if that improves Skype. Amazingly, that seems to work. <laughs> we're doing and a few other things. That's how you know things. Skype. <laughs> I have some... Uh, Good luck charms. I'm like circling around my, my laptop. Little voodoo doll <laughs> sticking yeah. pins voodoo doll. in Tony Bates. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> actually, at some point, I would like to have a conversation with you if, if you think that Microsoft... I know one of the things Microsoft is doing is moving uh, Skype onto the uh, Azure cloud, aren't they? Mm -hmm. And they uh, that process could be part of the unreliability we've experienced lately in Skype. I don't know. Just speculating. Yeah. I, I Speaking of speculation, what about that Alan Mulally? <laughs> what does he think about Skype? <laughs> what does he think? No. So is yeah. Bates, am I wrong? Is, is Bates a good uh, possibility? I think I think you're right about name. Sacha. Sacha is definitely on the short list. Yeah. Bates, Stephen Elop, um, Alan Mulally. And after that, we don't really know, I think. Yeah. Now, this year, Nokia will, the Nokia phone division will officially become a part of Microsoft. That's been approved by every... Regulatory body from here to so India. China, China hasn't Except approved China. it, right. and China Except has to China. approve it. Well, they do. What? Yeah, actually, they do. Sure. What? It's the biggest cell phone market in the world. It's worse than the UN Security Council. <laughs> it's like everyone has veto power. Yeah. Well, right. I mean, I, there's a there's a story there that perhaps there's a little bit of inside baseball occurring where people want to uh, protect the Chinese cell phone carriers. From and I'm sorry, cell phone makers and uh, wireless carriers from this, you know, new competitor, uh, that this could be a problem for them. So we'll see how that goes. But I, I, I'm, I assume that will go through. Yeah, uh, but it, what's going to be interesting is once it is approved, Microsoft gets thirty thousand more employees. That's which is just what they need. Going crazy edition, <laughs> right? Like more, more people. <laughs> yeah, and uh, that also means that Microsoft can officially start integrating the Nokia um, manufacturing and distribution and uh, other parts of the teams that they've acquired 
as part of the transaction. So then we're going to start seeing what it looks like in terms of what uh, Microsoft's product lineup looks like. Because right now, you know, there's the Nokia tablet, the 2520, and there's the Surfaces. And we're not sure which of those things are going to survive, if all of them are, uh, how phones are going to now be changing once Nokia actually becomes part of Microsoft and who, in terms of the other Windows Phone players, stays uh, as part of the ecosystem. So there's a million kind of what-if scenarios and variables that we don't really know until the transaction is official and things start shaking out. So, yeah, lots of uncertainty. Of <laughs> it's fascinating, though, isn't it, to watch? Yeah, it's going to be crazy. <laughs> it's going to be a crazy 2014. It is. <laughs> and we'll be covering it all right here on Windows <laughs> Weekly. The gags and laughs come fast and furious <laughs> right, right. in this fun-filled <laughs> battle of the CEOs. Um, if once the thing happens, will the Nokia handsets be the same? Will we still have Lumias? Will we still have... Uh, That's the question, isn't it? I mean, I, I hope we will. Those so are the Asha, best of no class. Care, They're the best of breed. Okay. And there's no Surface phone. Right. <clears throat> Unless they rebrand it. I think they keep the brands the way they are. They should. Surface is the devices. I, Surface is an okay They brand. have to recognize they're in a consumer market, and a consumer does not want to or need to or, in fact, do a very good job at understanding these things. Right. Lumia, 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 that's a brand. Don't mess with it. You don't change, you know. By the way, it's, it is notable that these things are all brands that, like that that are names, that are made-up names, right? They're just names. And um, and they are, are 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 not good brands, but they're recognizable. You know, um, Microsoft doesn't at least yet make a product that's called something like the Microsoft Surface HSN dash O four seven seven W. That's a Lenovo you know, name, <laughs> which is like a lot. Of, yeah, like a lot of HP. You know, yeah. a lot of Ugh. companies do stuff like that. Yeah. And um, I think it's important that they keep it simple, whatever they do. That uh, these brands, at least they're brands. They should call it the Ford Lumia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think there was a Ford Lumia, wasn't there? <laughs> if, if there wasn't, they missed a, missed a rare opportunity. Um, Windows Phone 8.1 Blue debut. Right. This is something we've been waiting for for a long time. It's the last of the blue wave. So that's the Windows Phone 8.1. Um, they made it just in time. If they'd waited any longer, it would have been threshold. Exactly. <laughs> right. right. Well, and then it yep. will be starting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is the last of the blue wave. And and so this is supposed to be a pretty meaty release of Windows Phone. Like one, of th one thing it's going to have, we're pretty sure, is the notification center gets added to Windows Phone. Uh, also, Cortana, which is Microsoft's uh, answer to Siri, basically, but uh, but a little different from it in, an, in a couple ways. That also is going to be part of this release we keep hearing. So there's, there's going to be some pretty big feature components to this. And uh, we're not sure if there'll be a developer preview first. I would think there would be uh, and maybe around the time of Mobile World Congress, I would think. And then uh, spring has always been kind of the consistent time frame that we've heard for Windows Phone Blue to debut or start debuting to customers. Yeah. And not coincidentally, in early April, there is a build conference. Um, which ah. could be tied to that and, and maybe uh, tied to some early information about the maybe the threshold uh, generation of stuff. Mm -hmm. Right. So, yeah, that's that's going to be a big deal. And then, you know, what we don't really know after that is what happens with Windows Phone the rest of 2014. Will there be these uh, ongoing continued kind of incremental updates like we have with Windows Phone this year, kind of like update one, update two? I would think that's what's going to happen. Because Threshold isn't really supposed to start rolling out until 2015. And I can't imagine uh, they're going to just let Windows Phone sit there for a year. So I think, I think you'll see Even that. they just did kind of do that. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Although we get some little yeah. updates this yeah. year, right? We get, no, we get true. updates true. one, two, and three. Yep. So. Yeah. So, and also at the time Windows Phone Blue comes out around spring, there's supposed to be an update to Windows 8.1 that's uh, internally called Windows 8.1 Update 1. And what we think is going to be in that are, are some changes at the API level to make Windows Phone and, uh, I'm sorry, Windows Phone Blue and Windows Blue, which is Windows 8.1, more in alignment. 
so that they're getting increasingly uh, more common from a code standpoint, which means over time, they'll actually be able to have the same store, although I don't think that's going to happen this calendar year. Uh, and the development situation will be better for people who are trying to build for both platforms because they'll be sharing more of the common code base. And, you, and supposedly, you'll be able to use more of the same APIs, same tool set to develop for both platforms. So it's, it's a step along that unified platform road this year. <laughs> Follow the unified platform road. Follow the unified <laughs> platform road. Follow, 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 follow. It's not as not as roll trippingly off the tongue. It doesn't. I think we could get there. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the things that's been kind of really important and 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 we're waiting for is uh, new office apps designed for the metro generation. <laughs> it's like a Pepsi ad. It is. <laughs> uh, and we're getting closer, right? We've got uh, Touch First Office apps. Uh, did they just come out? Nope, they're not out yet. But they're uh, coming. They're coming. I'm excited. Right. This is Gemini, the thing that we've been talking about. It feels like for months and months. It has been months and months. Gemini are the um, Touch First versions of Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. Have you seen the them? Second uh, I have not seen them, but I've talked to people who've seen them. Are they? I don't know if Paul, Paul has seen them. So the, you, my question would be, and I'm sure everybody else would ask, are they, are they you taking existing Office and yeah. slapping? I don't know. It's right. like a magnifying glass on the. No. Or are they actually really, really, well, really the, well, redoing? Here's some of the things to think about. Um, Internet Explorer in Windows 8 and Windows 8.1 is this kind of common app that has a, a Metro version and right. a desktop version. They share rendering engine. You know, are you think they they're going like to go that? that route? Well, that's what I'm wondering. In other words, I hope not. That's, that's one confusing. Route. Yep. Uh, the other one would be to think of them as kind of a on-prem or like a locally installed version of what's available in the office web apps. But then you have to make concessions to the Metro style UIs. Do they use app bars? Do they use something like what we have in OneNote Mobile uh, on Windows 8, which is kind of a cool app? You know, there's a lot of questions. I've I've not seen it, so I'm very curious which route they take. Right. And remember, some people said they might use that radial dial thing that mm -hmm. we saw. Right. Um, yeah. right. So that well, might be the way. We see it now in OneNote, right? Um, yeah. yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. and it's an interesting, I'm not saying that's the UI of the future, but it's it feels more one way to overcome the constraints of a touch interface and yeah. present a lot of UI when you need it. Mm -hmm. It's more stylus -y to me mm -hmm. than it is. I mean, that's in fact what Samsung yeah. does on the Note yeah. 3 with the, with the stylus. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, from what, from what I've heard, I, I haven't heard this is like you take Word and you dumb it down. It's not like that. It's more they rebuilt these supposedly from the ground up to be touch first. Mm, okay. Mm. Yeah. And then and, and so supposedly, again, I'm saying because this is just from sources and Microsoft has never confirmed this. Um, once they have this out for Windows and for their Surface tablets and, and any Windows PCs that need it. Uh, then they're going to come out with versions for iPad and Android tablets. And I think that may be this year as well, but probably towards more towards fall or end of year, unless they've decided to change that timetable. And they can't wait much longer, you know? They can't. <laughs> at, at some point, they're going to come up with Office and the, the world is collectively going to yawn and then move on. I mean, I, it, it seems like this needs to happen. Yeah, it's really going to be about how they do it. And, of course, it's going to get the same complaints no matter what that the ribbon got. I mean, it's a major UI uh, update. Sure. And that may be kind of incentive for Microsoft to do this bifurcated product that Internet Explorer is. But I, w I hope that they don't do that. I just feel right. like that's it's confusing to real people. Yeah. Um, but, you know. Yeah. Uh, it's a, that's a, I mean, how long did it take him to do the ribbon? That's a long undertaking to rethink the UI. It's not just do the ribbon, but get it right. Yeah, yeah. You know? and so they, they shipped it in Office yeah. 2007, and then I would say probably 2010. Well, actually, it wasn't fully implemented until 2010, and then they made improvements again in, in 2013. And so, you know, realistically speaking, that took whatever that is, six years or something. Yeah. Six years is not, Microsoft does not have six years. No, 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 no. no. You want to get this <laughs> Yeah. But that's, but, you know, I think we often, especially, well, you guys don't, because I think you, you, you're you more on the inside. But a lot of people like me who are on the outside 
uh, of, of any company often underestimate the difficulty, the resources, how hard the company's trying, but how hard it is to do. And yes. you, yep. you don't, a, a new UI doesn't spring forth from the no. head of Zeus. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, uh, and maybe if it would, it that does. would be a good thing, but it doesn't. Yeah. So, yeah. No, you're right. Uh, yeah. Right. That's, it's, so it's you got to complain and, and it's really explain easy. how you would do it if you, if yeah. only you could do it. But it's a lot. Right. I mean, but it's, yeah, the real, the realistic. And you uh, don't just throw money at this. You have to find really good people who are good thinkers. Yeah. And, there, and, there, and there is a timeline that you just can't um, speed up. Mm -hmm. Right. You can work as hard as you can, right. so it's going to be challenging. But we, we, but I think if Microsoft's serious about touch, uh, their the pride of their product line, uh, their, you know, their number one app has to be touch enabled. Yep. Right. Challenging. Right. So when will so we'll see it when you think? Some uh, summer maybe um, is has been the rumor for a while that we'll see it on Windows and then fall late fall for uh, iPad and Android tablet. Yeah, and I've been very quick, and I, uh, it's a little facile to say, oh, they'll never do it, or they'll take a long time doing it for the iPad because mm -hmm. they want to promote Surface. But it could very well be it's just a hard thing to do. That's what I've heard. Yeah. Um, it, I, I've actually asked around a little bit, like, why are you guys waiting? Are you are you consciously holding this back? And they said, you think we're holding this back? You're crazy. <laughs> no, you know? they want to do it. I believe they want to do yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, we're trying to do it, but we have to <laughs> almost, start from scratch. I, I, we're almost at the point now where they should just release these things concurrently. I mean, I, I a year and a half ago when they were preparing Surface, the original version, you could make this argument, you know, put this on on Windows because that's how you promote the platform. Things have changed a lot in the last year and a half. You know, Windows is not Microsoft's biggest business. It's not even its second biggest business. I mean, the, you kind of reach a point where if you're, you know, being real about being a devices and services company, that your biggest service in some ways for end users is Office, and it needs to be everywhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's time to stop worrying about this other stuff. You know, you just need to get that out there. Yeah. And, you know, they may decide to do that because so many things yeah. are in flux right now. They're... Um, Whole, you know, the teams are all under new management. The office team considers as part of its charter now to support all platforms. It's not just Windows yeah. first and, and they, everything way, else second. They do a great job with that, too. If you follow mm -hmm. the they releases do. of their mobile apps, they update these things all the time. And if you further think about things like the SkyDrive app as being part of this little circle, because it's, you know, part of Office 365 Home Premium and so forth, um, those things... You know, they get updated all the time. It's it's pretty impressive. Yeah. How, it's got to be one of the biggest teams inside Microsoft. Yeah. There's, yeah, there's so. last I heard, over 5,000 developers on Wait Office. a minute. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. What? Uh, Wait a you minute. You know, because... 5,000? Okay, think of, think of, no, think what Office is, though. It's not just Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and OneNote. There's Visio... There is um, Access, there's Office 365, right? There's a ton there's of other stuff. Web apps, there's uh, all the mobile apps. You need right. to have different people with different skills putting the, you know, the same or uh, context-specific yeah. features on different mobile devices. Wow. I mean, there's, there's so much to it. I had no idea. Sure. That's a I mean, big team to, to be, manage. Yeah, there used to be 5,000 people, uh, developers on Windows, I, I had heard, around the time of Windows yeah. 7, too. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's, boy, uh, Microsoft must have... Internally, some hellacious project <laughs> management stuff. <laughs> wow, and they ain't using I GitHub. I don't think. I mean, this is like this is serious <laughs> stuff. Yeah, it's Do, it's they're big teams. <laughs> yeah, I I you know uh, there's a classic in the programming called the Mythical Man Month. Yeah, uh, which talks about th that how difficult it is to scale programming. Uh, yeah. You can't uh, you can't say well this product's going to take three man months to write so we'll hire three people and then we'll have it in a month it doesn't work that way right. um so microsoft discovered this during the development of longhorn right you that know. which they scrapped in fact that's as yeah. as uh, uh, steve Ballmer told mary joe Foley. well that's when it just got too big his right greatest I mean, regret in, in the past it worked you know this group's going to do this thing. This group's going to do this thing. These yeah. guys do this. And then just pile it all it together. together. <laughs> yep, and that worked done. fine when you had five things. Yeah. But when Longhorn had 127 different things, and they were all working on these things separately wow. and threw it in the pot together, wow. it wasn't a delicious stew. It was some kind of a sludge. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what happens sometimes. Do, do are the are the project management tools in Visual Studio the same ones they use 
corporately or they must have something even they probably have other tools as well yeah. right I mean, and the they idea, use yeah. team foundation service they they use a lot of their own tools but they have custom tools developed for their internal projects yeah. by the well. way it, it's not coincidental that microsoft has a lot of team development tools right whether they're for right. office productivity type right. things or for developers and so forth and every time they talk about that stuff i know and i think to myself they made that for them yeah, <laughs> yeah. you know <laughs> this is something they understand you it's know really getting big teams of people to collaborate right it's just really mind-boggling yeah mm -hmm. wow five thousand that would be a great trivia question because I, I don't think anybody would go that would guess that high. Uh, you're right. There's many for every feature in office. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm responsible right. for cut and paste. <laughs> you know? it would all, yeah, I mean that people have the one thing that they do, right? That's that's completely sensible. The problem, of course, is, is as you say, stitching it all together into a cohesive whole that all works with one another. That was the point of object-oriented programming: is that somebody could write a black box with a defi well-defined interface. And then they wouldn't interact. It wouldn't be a problem. But oh, that, I, I don't guarantee know. you someone on Longhorn thought that was going to be their object-oriented operating system. Right. And that's exactly how they were going to do it. Right. You know, I and guarantee that was part of it. Objective file system and all the baloney. It's such like, an old code base. I can't imagine that they are working in that kind of environment. It's got to all interact, which makes it just a hairball. Yeah. And then the other part of the hairball is having to support older versions, right? I mean, well, there's you know, still a lot of people running those older versions. It's, right? This is somewhere. This is a place that Microsoft. Well, I guess they can't. Huh? You know, it's interesting. You just they gotta cut the. Cord. It's interesting, Mary Jo, that you just said that because when they switched to the um, the ribbon UI in Office, they didn't offer the toolbar one as an off fallback, right? And remember, in in, uh, in Windows, they always did that until Windows 8. They always offered the old ver way of doing things. You know, the start menus and all that. They always offered a way to go back to the previous one. I wouldn't say it was the first one where they didn't do that. And the same guy kind of ran both of those teams, right? The, the team that did the ribbon in Office that didn't offer a fallback, and then the team that made Windows 8 and didn't offer a fallback, you know, had many of the same people responsible. And they're, and they're all gone. Well, now they are, yeah. I never really saw it that way until you just said that, but it is, yeah. it's an in, inter interesting parallel. You know, I, I look at uh, Apple, which, and part of this is because Apple really doesn't have a presence in business. And business is where legacy is king. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the, even the three-year-old iPad, mm. three years old, will not work with the current operating system. Mm. Right. I've never, I can't think of any well, product you, you, in history yeah. that was yeah. obsoleted in three years. They're very rapid uh, moving forward. And, and they're very aggressive, you know. And, and uh, they all, the put only up with time, it, but I don't understand why, frankly. I, they can, because they can get away with it. Yeah, they get away with um, it. The only time that Apple made any concerted effort to uh, accommodate the past was in the transition to Mac OS X. Right. And they had, and they the had Rosetta that classic and the, the class. You know, they, yeah. made, they transitioned people from an Apple II type system to the Mac without any real crossover at all. No, you know, um, you know yeah. and G4 to Intel, they also were pretty good at, at making that yeah, no, that, transition. Yeah, that's true. But they did it, it right. in a different way. They did, they <laughs> yeah. provided. Uh, software, compatibility they, boxes, but it it wasn't like oh we're going to make sure the current right. version works on all our hardware. Yep. Uh, oh, it it really um, and but it was the temporary and they pulled the words, plug on both of those. I think there's an understanding that when people buy a computer, they hold on to it. Um, there, there's a weird thing that occurs with these devices where people buy them over and over again, and so I think Apple and other it's not just Apple everyone does this. I think they know. They can move people forward more quickly just by a new device because the device is the thing. You know, with a computer, in, in many ways, it's the operating system is the thing. The, the platform on which the apps run is the thing. Um, it's just a different, it's, it's, it's so awful in so many ways because it makes everything so disposable, you know, as we move forward to this kind of model. So well, let's talk about Chromebooks. <laughs> so, <laughs> we are going to get to that, I'm sure. But Speaking the, of disposable. Yeah. yeah. Um, and yet, uh, I've seen a number of articles. Maybe you can just debunk this. I don't know. Is this on your in, uh, Oh, easily. Agenda? Yeah, it's on our list. Okay, we'll, say, we'll save it because it's the yeah. NPD story. And easily. You're going to talk about that. All right. <laughs> but, but we want to finish I'll do it blindfolded up. with my back to the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you on that? <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> good. I made my kids watch a Three uh, Stooges marathon the other day. They... They were not that actually was my cowardly line, but thank you. No, I know, but I mean, it's uh, okay. they reminded me of that era. That, <laughs> and no, I know. I, I... Old black and white stuff. Yeah. Did they yeah. like it? No. 
Not even huh. the boy. Universally, the why, response Dad? was, this is stupid. It is stupid. That's why we this love it. Right. Sit down and enjoy it. My <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, wife tried to explain to me it was a guy thing. But uh, some people have said it's a guy thing. You know, I actually, I'm starting to get somebody's hair. It's not Moe's, but it's starting to... It's some I, okay, this, I'm sorry. I don't, I'm, I don't know. I'm, my brain is a non sequitur today. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm somewhere else. There's some incredibly intelligent stuff in the Three Stooges. Or what? It, I should say intelligent humor in the Three Stooges. Um, I, I, there was a line that was something like, every time you think, humanity weeps. <laughs> you know, this lines like that that I just think are every time you think humanity weeps is really kind of sophisticated. Yeah, it's uh, they had to throw something in for the grown ups. I presume the Three Stooges was intended for children. I, yeah, I don't know. They're shorts that come before the movie on yeah. Saturday afternoons when you paid a sure. nickel to go to the theater. <laughs> I don't remember those days, but I'm sorry. Heard I, <laughs> New Surface devices. No, we are not going to get a Surface Mini. This is a joke. No, we will. Really? We're going to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like a mini eight inches, like the venue or. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like an eight inch surface. Will there be a seven inch anything? Well, <laughs> Paul was the one who, who wrote this originally, right? Did, yeah. You were the first one, I think, who heard there be an eight inch surface. Or did you say it was seven? I can't remember. For this, um, it was going to be this year. Surface two line. Yeah. It was originally part of that generation. Right. It got pulled very late. In the yep. development. Oh, yeah. Because I like, actually, we like, I think, the 2520. We like the venue. Um, yeah, I think the venue 8, venue 8 Pro is probably the, you know, or well, any of these are fine. But, I mean, I think that's the one I think most people are aware of. And but we're talking about Pro, right, not RT. Right. That's what we don't know. Ah. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. On the venue 8 Pro. Yes. The 8 is the, yeah. the, the Pro. The original the plan for the, the Surface Mini was Qualcomm chipset. Right. Which is not what's in the Surface 2. Ah. Uh, running Windows RT 8.1. Okay. Not yeah. Windows 8. Right. Whatever. No, that makes sense. I, I think the venue is a specialized product that is not you know, going to be for mass consumption. So them pulling it back is interesting because if they ship this thing in the spring, it's not like the chipsets are going to change, right? I mean, we would have to well, wait until next Christmas. Or, or do you know? Well... Well, Ooh, well, well. Let's look closely let's, at Mary Jo and see what she's got <laughs> up her sleeve. Yes. Let's talk about a piece of news that just broke while you're we on the show. Well, <laughs> Tom okay, Warren. Well. Tom Warren's found out somehow that Microsoft has changed the chipset in Surface Pro 2 tablets uh -huh. to a oh, faster this, yeah. Intel chip. Uh, Intel. So, this is for right, the so people getting the Pro. In other words, this you send yours in to get it fixed and you get a new one. Right, and you get a yeah. faster, a new, new and better and faster. So they can change the chipsets in these things well, on the wait fly. Wait a minute. Oh, I, right, so I'm like sorry. break your like Surface Pro words, 2 Pro now because you could get a better one when you bring it in? <laughs> yeah. No, no, I, what I mean is <laughs> these things don't change every three months, right? Like this, no, they uh, don't. The Tegra 3 the specs comes don't. out one yeah, year yeah. and a Tegra right. 4 comes exactly. out one year later. Very you know, true. Whatever but chipset. back back to the Surface Mini, um, that the rumored Surface Mini. Uh, yeah, like Paul said, originally it was going to be an ARM-based machine, but then there have been new rumors since that it's going to be Intel-based. Um, possibly Bay Trail. And then there have been rumors that they might do both, an, an Qualcomm and a Bay Trail. I don't know why they would do that. But, yeah, so we don't we don't know what chipset's going to be in that thing. But I think we'll people, definitely, we I are definitely going to see one. I think there are people in Microsoft who are holding a candle for this ARM thing, and they really want it to succeed. Yeah. And it's mm -hmm. just one of those things that the market is saying no to, you know? But, and, uh, and the reason they wanted to succeed is because, uh, what, battery life? Vague, is that the... It's reasons that nobody cares about. I, I, well, I really don't think it's necessary to achieve what they want to achieve. I'm not sure because it, do you really want to run Intel-based uh, legacy applications, say, like Photoshop on an 8-inch tablet? No. But it, no. it's nice to have that option, right? I mean, in other words, it... If keeping me from moving from my gigantic Windows desktop to a modern world where I can have these other devices is I can't I want a tablet, but I have I have all this stuff in iTunes, you know, mm -hmm. and that's a big blocker for me. And if I can't run iTunes on this little tablet, it's not really worth it to me because that's how I watch movies or whatever. Um, you know, you know, you can run iTunes on that thing. And and yeah. is it going to be an awesome experience? No, probably not. But I mean, at least you can. And I think it's just. Right. The, for the transition, you know, I, I don't remember who it was. You uh, you will remember who did this. Someone wrote a, a, a post um, sometime in the past year where they were talking about, you know, Windows RT doesn't have to be ARM. 
you could do Windows RT on right. x86, right? That was Hal Berenson who wrote Hal that. Hal Berenson, yep. thank you. And um, yep. yes, I mean, so as part of this transition, you provide these versions of Windows that do provide that backwards compatibility. And as the platform gets more mature, it's eventually you provide versions that don't. I'm intrigued by And those by versions could still be x86. W uh, what would it take to make an x86 RT? Well, I mean, it, it, what, is it exactly the with, same? I mean, I don't. Yeah. Well, with, mostly, yeah. remember with um, Windows Threshold, we've already heard the rumor that there's going to be a version of that that runs on both Intel and ARM, and it's going to be consumer, very consumer focused. Um, it's going to be for a certain class of device uh, that doesn't necessarily need to have the legacy apps running. It's more a consumption device than a than a creation device. Yeah. To use the yeah. old terminology. Um, but yeah, that, I, so I, I think, think it can be done. And it gets better. I mean, it already has happened. Right. You take the desktop away and you say, hey, if you need the desktop, you're going to use this SKU of Windows. And if you don't, you're going to use this one. And it doesn't it matter what the chip is. Literally part of the Pro SKU. Right. And by the way, all of a sudden, then you have a real differentiator, right? I mean, between right. Core and Pro. That makes sense. Right. You know, that's fine. And it's much easier to explain to people. It's like, do you need legacy apps? Okay, buy this. That you is don't Pro. Need them, that's buy the, this. That right. says pro. Mm hmm. Hmm. Mm hmm. So yeah. we'll see. And the other, the other Surface we know is coming for sure is um, the LTE, Surface 2 with LTE built in. We, we know that's going to be early 2014 if they're still on schedule for that. Uh, so that, that's also a new Surface device. Not really brand new, but I haven't new. heard anything specific about new Surface devices for 2014, but I did hear something very vague. Um, and this would be from a, a sor the source of a lot of the stuff I've talked about Surface in the past, which was simply that people will be surprised by how much Surface stuff occurs this year. That if you look at year one where it was two devices and then in a couple, you know, covers, and then year two was two, you know, two more devices and then a bunch of more accessories, year three is going to be a much bigger deal again. And so we'll see. You know, it's very vague and... Some well, we got, we've also got yeah, the peripherals, too. We haven't even talked about that aren't out yet. So the um, right. power keyboard is coming, yep. right, to the Surface. And also the docking station will be back supposedly in stock because that was only very limited. Has that just been out of stock? Is that what happened? They, they mm -hmm. put it out for a little while, yeah. 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 So those are both coming probably Q1. Right? That's very disappointing. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I have to take this. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's Qualcomm <laughs> calling. So Intel has low, I mean, the scale processor and so forth, they have low power ARM-like yeah. arc. In fact, isn't Intel doing no, an I mean, ARM I, chip? I, I sort of get the the point of ARM, right? Because you, you're making a device and it want, you need it to actually behave like a device. It's that media center thing. You can't be watching TV with a remote control and have a Windows dialog box pop up in the middle of your TV screen. It, it ruins the experience. And, you know, Windows tablets are kind of the same thing, If you're especially the small tablets. You don't want to ever have to go to the desktop. You don't want to have to have that experience. And, um, you know, obviously the metro side of the house, the modern side has to uh, mature for that to happen. And I think it has. I think we're just about there. I think the next version is the one where they could make that break if they wanted to. Um, but it's not just that. It's the, it's, will something running on the system impact the reliability of the system, the battery life of the system? Does it have little tendrils everywhere in the system that are doing different things that you can't keep track of and, you can't control. I mean, uh, this metro thing is a self-contained environment. It's, uh, you know, it's a modern, literally modern mobile computing environment. And so x86 opens the possibility of compatibility, but it also opens the, uh, you know, opens up to the dark side of that as well, which is applications that run amok and destroy all your, you know, your resources. We call these applications like Chucky. Photoshop. We call them Chucky. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, one of the things that we don't, by the way just so you're uh, clear what we're up to we're talking about 2014 and by the way we are like for a week in which nothing happened you we are approximately find. approximately four percent into our list yeah you, I mean, <laughs> you always find plenty to talk about you know yeah. it, it's interesting <laughs> yeah now, there's always something to talk about this is predictions <laughs> Um, wearables? Will there be a Microsoft Watch? They did us. They did a watch, a Spot Watch. Mm -hmm. Had one. Don't have it anymore. Yep. <laughs>
which is yeah, good because the think... spot server was taken down a year ago. That's right. Yeah. Remember that? Mm. Yep. This time so, a year yeah, there, ago. There's rumors that they're going to do another watch. And uh, a lot of people were thinking it was going to be in 2013. And I've seen more, even more speculation in 2014 is when this is going to show up. I just got um, somebody suggesting recently, maybe not till 2015, uh, because maybe it's connected with Threshold yeah. uh, and that they need that release to do this. So I don't know. I, I think they are trying to do something. I mean, they're also, we know, trying to do things around glasses. We saw that leak about the Fortaleza glasses that originally were just about the Xbox. It feels so and me too. <laughs> it does I mean, feel Google me announced too. glasses. Oh, okay, we're doing glasses. Yeah. My, Apple rumors about a watch emerged. Ga Galaxy Gear. Well, actually, and I, don't, and, I don't think oh, the Microsoft yeah. glasses thing was had anything to do with Google, right? That was part of a leak about the X. Yeah. It, it was, was Xbox. That, I mean, it was in that slide it, stack about the next it, Xbox. It Much comes out around the true. time of Google Glass, so people make that connection. But yeah. right, um, and of course, if Microsoft were to release something today called Microsoft Glasses, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. come on, Mike. There's you no I'm waiting for it. Glasses too. I'm right? waiting they for the it. drone. There's got to be a drone somewhere, right? <laughs> Microsoft drone. <laughs> yeah, got to be. But yeah, supposedly they've talked up wearables a lot, and Julie Larson Green's team supposedly has people working on that, uh, the devices team, and there's also a team inside of the Windows group under Alex Kipman that's working on the software for whatever these wearables are. We just don't know what they are. We don't know what form they're going to take or when they're going to come out, but they're working on it's them. It's just going to sure. be a ribbon. A ribbon that you tie that you put around. around. <laughs> or it could be or your neck. a wearable paper clip. <laughs> yeah. It could be. What did SPOT stand for? Trivia question. Uh, I should know this. Personal object technology. Oh, wow. Wow, Mary Jo for the win. Well, she didn't so. get the S, but what was yeah, the what S was the S? I don't know. Um, Anybody in the chat room? Do you know what was the .NET they called? They had a special version of .NET that ran on this thing, and it was they called Micro.NET, or it yeah, kind of it was that. something <laughs> Micro.NET. <laughs> it was, yeah. Maybe it was just .NET Micro or <laughs> Smart <laughs> Personal Objects Technology. That's right. Yes, yeah. was smart. For some reason, you forgot that it was smart. Right. I did we somehow. Oh, understand. probably because we had them. <laughs> <laughs> we all had them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, 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 what was it? Was he using the um, FM radio station? It had MSN FM, Direct yeah. service. Yeah. Right. Remember that? Yeah. 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 And it, it was. MSN it was direct. using radio technology. It was like yeah. uh, public radio it's stations. Smart. I mean, it's used. it's smart. It is smart in that sense. But a lot of that, a lot of the stuff, you know, and Spot was one of these things. Um, some other Microsoft uh, projects that didn't live very long, like the smart displays were kind of like this, where you kind of, someone sits there and explains it to you and you nod your head and you're like, yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know, like, yeah. Uh -huh. it, and you don't really ever, you, you know, you don't get all excited about it. You're just like, yeah, okay. I, yeah. That seems right. like a good idea. You no, know, they tell you these stories. Like imagine yeah. you're at a football game and you're watching a football game because you love football and you're there, but you want to know what's going on in the other games. So you could get these little micro. You look at your watch. Things on your watch, it'll tell you what's going on. Little notifications. Yeah. And you're like, yeah. yeah. But it's not. You don't <laughs> you know, go. Yeah. Oh, I gotta have that. Right. I mean, oh, that was the I thing. can't I think wait till that happens. Was never like, oh my god, oh my god. A lot you of. Know? I don't blame Microsoft. A lot of new technologies like that. Glass. I yes. maybe I'm maybe I'm a uh, outlier here, but a lot. I don't. I mean, oh, I gotta have that. No, no, you're not an outlier. <laughs> I have a hard time not hitting everyone I see wearing those. And uh, I, but I, boy, you I cannot deny it. it eat it, it eat it up, <laughs> eat it up the news cycle. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, it, it was like yeah. it's the story that and Jeff Bezos's drones. No, but Microsoft has done things that have been very. I mean, I remember seeing um, Freestyle, which became a media center for the first time, and I was extremely excited. This was exactly what I wanted. Like I, the, I as soon as I saw this, I think the greatest um, kind of compliment you can pay to a technology product that you've seen but don't have yet, which is. You've made everything I have now suck. You know, like you've <laughs> ruined what I have. Like I'm going to go home and have to watch TV now, and that stinks because I want this. You know, and that was like that. And, you know, Spot Spot was not like that. Yeah. Spot. So we're going to do it again. It's back. I know. Spot. <laughs> Here's Maybe. Spot. Here's Spot. Here, boy. <laughs> Here's Spot. <laughs> Uh, Mike Baz yeah. remembers. It's the .NET Micro Framework yep. that was part of it. .NET Micro Framework. Yep. yep. You know, um, there was a Microsoft product recently that everybody said, got to have that. Then they got it. And that was about it. 
uh, well, I'm thinking Connect, which was at the time okay. the most widely uh, yep. uh, adopted new consumer technology oh, in history. But, yes, and the the percentage of people who owned Xboxes that got a Connect has was like the highest attach rate ever. Yeah, whatever that percentage was, it was it was well over fifty percent. It was some crazy number of people, and then and then they stopped talking about it because I don't think anyone ever bought one ever again. Like they, yeah. They, <laughs> they got it. Yeah. Everyone got it that wanted yeah. it. And then most people stopped using it almost yeah. immediately. <laughs> yeah. By the way, I, again. On the other hand, I, Xbox the One ones. Connect adoption, 100%. It's 100%. But actually, I have to say, the, the new one is pretty great. It and works. I, I was. It's too I bad like that was wasn't the, the first Connect, frankly. Sure. Mm. Although Connect has the same problem that, in my opinion, that Nintendo, the Nintendo we did. Which was it appealed a lot to the mind, and even maybe for the first couple of days, and then it just kind of receded. Yeah. Well, except that uh, Connect, I think the primary advance there is the voice stuff, right? So Apple, every, Apple gets all this press about Siri and whatever, and, and Google has Google Now and whatever. But I actually, you know, they had this, I don't know, a couple of years ago, and it's way better in Xbox One, and I think the I think the voice command stuff is amazing. And the Xbox, I, it's I really do think it's innovative. It's the way that it works. I, I, it's it's pretty amazing. And you know they'll come I out like with a new one. I, you, I, I but I can't say I leap off my couch to use it. <laughs> <Very often. laughs> no, but you don't. That's, you, don't you don't have to. By the way, voice. I have played. I have played the river rafting thing in my seat like this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So that's a big improvement. You don't have to stand up. All right, the first month we had Connect, everyone came over. I remember one time our babysitter called because she knew we had it just to say, look, I really want to watch your kids. Could you please go out so I could watch your kids? <laughs> you know, and it was like, okay. But a month goes by and that's the end of that. Yeah, they never looked at it again. No, and for me, the Wii was the same way. I even got Wii yeah. Fit. Spent some time trying to balance. Yeah, yeah, that no, thing. yeah, we yeah, did too. Yeah, yep. So anyway, uh, I, ironically, the new Connect is much better, but will it uh, change the world? I don't know. I really like my Xbox One, though. I have to say, I just go in to say hi to it. <laughs> Xbox on, hi yeah. Xbox. Well, you walk in the room, it will say hi to you. Yeah, hi Leo. <laughs> hi Xbox. What you doing? Staring at you in your underwear. See, that's what I need. That's what I need my <laughs> Xbox to actually yeah. do it. I want to think. Uh, you walk in the room and says, "What you doing?" <laughs> what you doing? What you doing? Or it sees you, you reaching for the on? controller like you're yeah. going to turn it up. Yeah. What you doing? Yeah. What you doing? I have to say I've twice now had to reboot my Xbox. It just stopped displaying stuff or whatever, and I just shut it down and fixed it. There are weird problems with it. Like uh, sometimes an app will crash back to the dashboard. I think that might be what's And actually, about. I think the phrase people have developed for that is they call it dashboarding. Like um, you run an app, and instead of running full screen like it's supposed to, it, it goes back into that dashboard kind of dashboarding tile. that's i'm glad that's dashboard. a nice name it's My so much nicer than crash crashing yeah it's better <laughs> than blue squidding. screening it's dashboarding yeah <laughs> uh i just downloaded the new espn app and you can watch espn live and you i mean it really is if you're a sports fanatic which i'm not but if you were it would yeah. really i could see how fun that would be and i actually yep. spent quite a bit of time in it and i'm looking forward to what they got to get hbo go and all these other apps yep. and this thing is, could be the ultimate media center in addition to, you know, I could play my rise. I'm waiting for some good games, but uh, well, happen. that's on the, that's on our list. I mean, uh, we'll get there. I think I think 2014 is the year that the Xbox One games become truly interesting. There's so going to be there is going to be a new Halo, isn't there? They put they they scared me. They put like a top down Halo game. Yeah, fifteen dollars. I know people get all excited. Oh and, and then it was it, what? It's the mobile game. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. It's okay, but it's not Halo 5. Right. But that's coming. Yep. Titanfall. I'm looking forward to Watch Dogs. That won't be an exclusive title, but I think it'll be awesome. Is that the, Watch Dogs isn't the... No, what's the Tom Clancy one? Um, oh, that's going to be uh, great. That looks interesting, too. Yeah. Splinter Cell. No. <laughs> that's really old. <laughs> I don't think it's Splinter Cell. But no, it's, it's not. I can't remember what it's, it's called. Tom Clancy. The Division. The Division. Some. The Division. <laughs> Um, no, I think that poor. I'm sorry, Mary Jo. Every time, poor Mary. It jo. always comes back to the Xbox. Yeah, we like our games. I know you do. Remember, <laughs> it runs Hyper V, so it's not all bad. 
I know. <laughs> There's some redeeming qualities. This will be the year of the cloud for Microsoft. If last year wasn't, I think last year really was arguably the year of the cloud for Microsoft, but more, more and more, right? Mm -hmm. And last year yeah, was the year yeah. Microsoft finally uh, put Office in the cloud and, and had a subscription. And, and will this be the year that uh, Windows goes to the cloud? I, <laughs> in some ways, right? I mean, I, uh, right. other people, uh, Citrix plus VMware or Amazon and some other companies have put, um, you know, desktop as a service. Of and Microsoft's building customers. that too, remember? Into Good Azure, right. So that's going to happen this year. Yep. Yeah. Yep. We don't know when that'll ship, but uh, they're building that. They're actively building that too. Yeah. But I, I think the bigger thing for people will be not so much that because that's kind of a, a corporate thing, right? Like a, um, you know, for enterprises or whatever. But I think from an end user perspective, what they need to do is something along the lines of the office stuff where they open up the licensing and make Windows behave more like an online service, even though it's something that you buy and you install locally and all that kind of stuff. But um, make it a system that you can license more freely across multiple devices. And I bet, I bet we do see that this year. Yeah, so a subscription. Windows is a subscription, yeah. right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. we could. And then we're going to see more enterprise stuff in the cloud. You're going to see more of the Dynamics ERP stuff in the cloud and uh, probably more Microsoft services, uh, at least moving to the cloud and transitioning to be hosted on Azure. So we know uh, they're doing that with Skype and they're also doing that with um, Outlook.com. They're putting more and more things on Azure, uh, which as, a, as an end user, you're not going to necessarily notice a difference, but... Uh, it just makes you, uh, if you're an enterprise, especially able to kind of have a more common base, uh, subscribe to things in an easier way, have the single sign on across all the different things that you subscribe to from Microsoft. So they're definitely trying to push people. It's almost like, hey, try this. And if you like this, maybe you'll pick up CRM online and maybe you'll pick up Dynamics online. So <laughs> maybe I will. Yeah. Maybe you will. Maybe you won't. <laughs> is there a cloud based to do that I could? Oh, yeah, there is. For sure there is. Yeah. <laughs> and there you go. Let me just write that down at uh, 1219, one hour and 19 right. minutes of the show. Hadoop. <laughs> right, right. Hadoop. It's the drinking Hadoop. show, folks, if you're, uh, <laughs> everyone's going to do a shot. <laughs> Every show has to have at least one mention. Hadoop moment. Right. Who had one hour and 19 minutes? In? Uh, Hadoop <laughs> moment. Yeah, we should do a little pool at the beginning of the show. <laughs> right. It'd be like Hadoop yeah. bingo. Right. Good idea. Um you have a link here to an article. Yeah. For, uh, I guess, Paul, you wrote it, Windows IT Pro. Is Windows on decline facing the biggest problem with Windows in 2014? What is that biggest I saw, problem? I, I use the word ambivalence in the article. A number of people have written me. I'm, I'm, I'm embarrassed for my editors that nobody caught this, but I, I think the correct word is actually indifference, <laughs> not ambivalence. But, <laughs> ambivalent um, means you can't. You're like ambidextrous. Pick up your mind, right? You can't yeah. choose one or the other. Yeah. Indifference is like, who the hell <laughs> cares? Which I was, which was my actual point. So I apologize. For <laughs> Ambivalent's that not bit. far off, though. I mean, it could. There's a. That's a nuanced shading. I think. It's the nuance. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you I think people that. are indifferent? Yeah, I do. I, and I, I think that's the problem for Windows. You know that if 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 people were actually hostile to Windows in a general sense, I know that there are pockets of the world that are you know, Mac enthusiasts and so forth. But if, if the general populace was actually it's just outright hating Windows, in some ways that would be a better situation because at least they were being emotional about it and caring. Right. You know, um, I think that people just don't care. You and say Windows is in trouble because people simply don't care about it anymore. Oh, as I wrote. It's not hostility. <laughs> yes. Civilly. Yes. It's not outright hostility. Hostility? <laughs> you know, that word. It's ambivalence. It's but I think indifference, you know, you could say ambivalence. It's like, well, we don't, you know, it's fine. We'll use one or the other. Ambivalence isn't completely inaccurate. Um, mm -hmm. It means I'll use whatever. And I think this is actually how most people feel. It's not, it is indifference, yeah. but they'll use whatever, you know, is thrust upon them. I don't think that Windows was ever something that people outwardly desired. I think that people mm, went to Windows for very pragmatic reasons. Like, I, I will run, I want Windows because everyone has Windows. In right. the early days, that's exactly you know, right. my brother, my friend, my whoever has Windows and they have this app and I want to run this app and it's on Windows and that's where it was. And um, these days, the apps that people want to run are on Android or they're on iOS. 
than auto windows. And this is a, a problem. It's a problem you see in the, the fact that there are no major new Windows desktop applications that have been developed over the past several years. And it's a problem on the new side of the house because when you create a new environment like Metro, uh, you also see no, not a single major new app only running on Metros or, 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 or running on Metro at all. I mean, it's just, you know, whatever. And I think I, I've talked to people about this who are developers. Um, it's interesting to me, a lot of people really respect the Microsoft stuff, uh, the developer tools especially, but even the Metro environment. I, I've, I just spoke to a guy from, um, well, actually, I can't say where he's from. So, But I, sp I spoke to a guy from a major software company who said that his engineers um, actually thought the Metro stuff was pretty fantastic, um, which was far better than I thought it was going to be. But they just don't see any call uh, to deal with it, to have to do a Metro version. And even their flagship kind of Windows products, which run on the desktop, are kind of just floating there. Not really, there's not much going on there. I mean, all the action is occurring on the web and on mobile platforms. And that's where people want to do that stuff now. And that's a problem, you know, for Windows. So, you know, again, I don't know. People like to say things like the tablet killed Windows or, you know, Chromebooks, uh, the notebook or blah, 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 whatever. And it's like, eh, not really. You know, we, we've always wanted simpler things. We've always wanted less expensive things. We've, you know, whatever. I mean, we, we want to be where the apps are. It's not, there's no like single dagger. It's like, uh, it's like Caesar, Leo. <laughs> <laughs> Death of a thousand cuts. Yeah. It's um, kind of what we were talking about earlier. It's not something people jump up and down and say, I got right. a has it. Yeah. Um, and my, and iOS, like something like iOS, for example. I think iOS in some ways suffers from the same problem. What people want on iOS are the devices because they're beautiful. And I think people like the fact that that's where they know when they get this, the apps are there. But I don't think a lot of people look at iOS and think, this thing is neat. You know, like this iOS thing is great. I don't really think people think about it like that. I, I most people, normal people, you know. Um, I, I, again, I, I think there's a, there's the emotional part of it, which Microsoft has never really had, uh, of the device, and then there's the pragmatic side, which is the apps. The apps run on it, and that's why people buy those things. Right. You buy it because it's utilitarian. And I think that's what, right, and that's one of the reasons they did the Surface. Right, they want people to have an attachment to something they're building. Like nobody says, "I love Windows." Like, well, except for a few crazy people that Paul Some and I both do. know. Alex Gumpel. Some people. <laughs> says, I, love, I yeah. love Windows. I love Windows, but he's a lonely I guy. mean, we met the Zune tattoo guy this year, this past year. I mean, How is he people... feeling about that tat these days? Just to get He had it removed, but he's what? still a Windows fan. He's he still a Windows fan. But there aren't that many of them. But they, Microsoft's goal is, you know, let's get people to love their Surface and really yep. feel like an, an affinity to it. And more, more like people feel towards their iPhones and their iPads, right? And, and, and their Nokia yeah, devices. Because if you don't love it, you know, I mean, eventually the time comes to get something new. And you don't tend to go buy something you don't love again, you know? Right. Yeah. And this is a problem. Yeah. Uh, wow, that's really interesting. Uh, Tim, you know, uh, I've been thinking a lot about this in the context of what we do. And yeah. uh, there, uh, it, I think a successful television show mm -hmm. is successful because you have to tune in next week, right? Right, right. If you're indifferent right. to it, if it's just, well, it's on, that's okay. And TV shows, you know, I mean, a lot, most TV shows, that's the way it is. Eh, it's Thursday night. I guess I'll watch Cheers. Mm -hmm. But... When you get attached to the people and you have to watch it, that's when it's real. That's the real success. Yeah. You you want that kind of success, but you know, it might be the boat is the ship has sailed on that for Windows. I don't don't you think? Well, uh, I yes. I mean, I, but a mean device can't, people can feel that way about a device. Maybe right. it doesn't mean they can't get yeah. it back. I mean, obviously they're trying. Right. Uh, but you know what? I got to be honest though. I uh, the Windows eight stuff. It's um. I think there's a problem there in that. They're, they're shooting for something that's very um, dynamic and, and shows you all your stuff and you see photos and it makes you feel, you know, like you're connected to it in some way. And I, I think they've been pretty successful with that on Windows Phone. I don't really feel like they've been successful for that with that on Windows. Yeah. And, and I, I, it's kind of hard to explain why, but I don't think a lot of people sit there and look at a screen of tiles on a computer. You know, when you sit down in front of a computer, you have some kind of intent. I'm going to write something in Word. I'm going to, you know, do an email. I'm going to browse the web. You, you know, you don't really have time to look at tiles. 
You know, people who walk around in the world with a phone, they're almost looking for an excuse to do something. People often look to their phone to see if anything is going on, and then they go and do that thing. You know, they don't turn their phone on and go, and go right to Facebook. They turn their phone on and it's like, oh, look, I have a Facebook alert. I'm going to go to Facebook. Right. You know? That kind of interface, I think, really works well on the phone. Um, so, so far, at least, I don't know that it works so great on the on uh, a tablet or a computer. You know, and I think that might be part of the problem too. Do you do you Maybe. think it works better on an eight inch size device? Because you yeah, looked you know, at the Dell Venue Pro, right? I mean, yeah, I, and I try to use these things. And yes, I mean, I, I, I you know, it's funny. So uh, let me let's turn this thing on real quick. I. I do this on my phone, and maybe my use is not necessarily the normal use. But, you know, when I look at my phone right now, for example, I can see something's happening in Facebook. I've got new email. Uh, I don't have this now, but you'll see an alert if you have, like, a new message or you missed a phone call or something. You've got, like, a calendar saying that something is coming up. And I've got, like, photo tiles, you know, uh, animating through different photos that I like and all that kind of stuff. So it's kind of like this, like, dynamic thing. i got my weather app is freaking out right now. Apparently there's some kind of a weather thing going on. I find it a bad sign if there's a red probably, exclamation point on it. Probably, but, Cali okay. yeah. probably Californian weather. And, it's yeah, weather, yeah. Right? yeah, it's windy. It's slightly windy. Yeah. Some, some woman's hair is being rustled <laughs> in California. Oh, my God. Um, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah I, mm. I do think on a mini tablet that you can get that same kind of thing. You know, the, it, it, we, I, we're still in some weird phase where we're not sure what the right size is or the best size or whatever it is for these tablets. But, um, yeah, in portrait mode, maybe. I mean, I, I just think that the Windows... I don't know these tiles. I don't know. I don't know. I'm worried that a lot of tiles for Windows apps don't do anything. <laughs> you know, yeah, like the Explorer, right. Internet Explorer is never going to do anything. SkyDrive doesn't do anything. Music, video, actually they can do things, but on my system they don't. You know, a lot of the tiles I'm looking at right now on my Windows computer are just giant icons. Yeah, that's, and that's, they're not no, that's interesting. Yeah, that's not using the potential there. Plus, you know, when you have a giant screen, um, you know, having like a square like this big that's orange and white <laughs> and has nothing going on is not... A waste of space. It's not interesting, yeah. yeah. So I, I, I see where they're shooting for, and I, I, I think it can be adapted to, to be nice, but I don't know. All right, Let's we see. have... Uh, have we hit all of the... Uh, <laughs> Believe it or not, LLB. that was the first item in the rundown. All right, one down. <laughs> All right. Luckily, everything else was quick. <laughs> rest, no, don't worry, Leo. The rest of this you is will fluff. never get a complaint from me in the in the <laughs> or really from any of our uh, our viewers or listeners. I think they they want to hear the. We're not in a hurry. This is not CBS. I have to say, I was watching. I won't. I don't want to name names, but I was watching uh, one of the major networks uh, cover the top tech stories. Oh, of nice. uh, 2013, you know the biggest. That must not have been disappointing in any way. Oh my mm. God! And the yeah. they the thing they picked as the number one ga the thing number one story the most important. Please be bitcoins, please. Be no, bitcoins. no, it's worse. It, the most important story of 2013, the thing that we're so excited about is drone delivery services. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And and neither of the two people in the story uh, bothered to say. Which is completely impractical. Wait, wait, uh, never Charlie Rose should have his his uh, credentials taken away from him from him for putting that story on the air. That was a, a, an embarrassment of epic uh, uh, for for CBS to put that in sixty minutes. But the other network, not CBS. No, I, and then for everyone to fall yes, for it, like this the is the biggest thing. story like, of the year. <laughs> it's like, come on. Yeah, Actually, I'm fun. glad. I'm thrilled because it's why people watch us. Right. Um, Woodward and Bernstein, were they still alive? <laughs> spinning in their graves. <laughs> Would be spinning in their graves. They're spinning. Of course, they're both alive, but that's all right. <laughs> Actually, didn't Carl Bernstein pass? I think he did. Uh, I think he did. Uh, did he? Jeez, oh, I hate to kill people prematurely. I know. Can I we know, check well. on that? <laughs> I know Bob Woodward's still writing books. I was joking. Maybe Bernstein's still alive. I don't think he's dead. I don't know why. I just see the guy smoking too many cigarettes. <laughs> He looks really young. Every time I watch that movie, he looks just—he looks great. Still alive. <laughs> <laughs> He's still alive. Uh, sorry, Carl. I have a—I have a lingering resentment over Carl Bernstein because my one and only chance to become a professional actor is working for Francis Ford Coppola on a radio play. Oh, lead role. Really excited. Yeah. I was really enjoying it. Really getting into it. And Coppola—he's sitting right there in his. 
and he looks at me and says, Leo, do it more as if you're Carl Bernstein. And I had no idea. I, I mean, I knew who Carl, I don't know what Carl Bernstein sounds like. What did he want? I don't know. Why would you? <laughs> so did you make the sound of a typewriter clicking? I said, <laughs> yes, Francis. What does that mean? You know, what, <laughs> I started to talk like this. I didn't know what to do. <laughs> right, right. So I, you know, I was very, uh, it was like, I, okay. That was the worst acting direction I've ever gotten. And maybe, you know, the truth is maybe that, you know, you're just supposed to know. The next day, he fired me and hired Father Guido Sartucci for the role, who oh. does sound so much like Carl Bernstein. Yikes. <laughs> Don Novello. To his credit, Don Novello had worked with Coppola before in the movie Tucker. And they were, you know, this is it. it you know, just want to tell you, in the Hollywood, it's all about who you know. My career, my nascent acting career, nipped in the bud. <laughs> I'm sorry. And that is not a made-up story as much as it sounds like it might be. I didn't just throw in the words Francis Ford Coppola, Carl Bernstein, <laughs> and Don Novello for fun. Sure. Actually, this happened. episode is all over the map. By the way. I feel, <laughs> it is. It I feel is. at I'm least partially responsible bitter. for this. I'm still a little bitter. All right, so Windows 7, Windows... Okay, take th I'll give you the three most recent versions of Windows. Actually, one, one is not in there. Vista's not in there. <laughs> XP, I don't know what happened to Vista, Windows 7 and Windows 8. Let's talk about sales figures. Right. Nobody's buying Windows XP, I believe. They're not buying it, right. and they're slowly getting rid of it, which is... Well, I believe good. these are not sales figures. These are... Uh, usage. No. Usage. 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 Right. Usage stats. From, believe it or uh, not, the, the headline in this story uh, from CNET is Windows 8.1 closes in on Vista. <laughs> <laughs> It's like a, Although, a news alert. Iceberg is closing in on Titanic. <laughs> but but I, I would argue you have to add 8 and 8.1 here to have the true stat here. Oh, yeah. It's Windows 8.1 right. only. So let's look at 8 right. and 8.1 together. Yeah. Windows so 7 is still you, number one, right? That's Windows funny. 7 is number one and growing. Last what? Week. It's still growing. That for Microsoft is a problem. Well, it's not, it's not. Actually, I shouldn't say it that way. It's, it's good because they're still selling Windows, right? But <laughs> they don't really want to see that number growing right now. Yeah. This is from uh, Net Applications, which tracks web usage. So uh, you might right. throw a little right. salt on top of this number. Yeah, sure. But if you add up Windows 8 and Windows 8.1, they're finally over 10%. 10.5%, 10 yeah. Finally, in the double digits. Windows um, 7, though, 47.52%. Uh, it's huge. Yeah. And and part of that is enterprise, right? Because a lot of enterprises are still in the midst of deploying Windows 7. So that so that probably incorporates that. It incorporates people still buying Windows 7 laptops who don't want Windows 8 okay, so, or can get a cheaper machine. So let's just recap. Windows 8, 10%. Windows 7, 47%. Right. <laughs> Windows XP, 29%. I know. Yeah. 29%. Yeah. How that's old is Windows XP? Of that, do you think is that's got to be business users almost it exclusive, is. right? It do is. Do they even Although, have a browser in Windows XP? <laughs> right, right. Yeah, a lot of people, yeah, using IE6 still there. <sighs> By the way, yeah. Win Windows XP is so old that how the browser, old is it, Paul? <laughs> and the, the browser in that OS, I think, was the inspiration for Firefox. <laughs> Isn't that this thing behind me? It's because they didn't improve IE enough, and they made Firefox, oh my which, God. by the way, now nobody uses. <laughs> like we, wow. the whole world has changed. And I would have said, I would have thought prior to seeing this statistic that, oh yeah, well, it's a lot of uh, you know servers in the closet. They're not being used by real people. They're just left over. Yeah. They're old. But this is measuring uh, web traffic. This is measuring right. people browsing the web. So these are actively in use. Mm -hmm. Wow. Right. Yeah, there's an XP users. I hear from them all the time on my site. And a lot of these people are not just corporate customers, but they're people who have... They're real people, either, frankly. They develop their own apps. Yeah. They're using apps that can't be ported over to Windows 7. Um, they're using peripherals like printers and other peripherals that can't be used with anything besides XP. And they're cheap. Right. They don't, right. They don't want to spend more money. If, as the thing's cheap. not yeah. broken. Yeah. Right. And I get calls all the time. The radio show... I would almost feel like the vast majority of people who call the radio show are using Windows XP. That's incredible. And those are real. That's the real. Uh, to me, that's I, I, th that's the real people. 
certainly we live in a in a bubble of sorts. I mean, um, because we're always we have to cover the new thing, you know, whatever it is. Right. Um, what's interesting to me though is not that people are still using the last thing, or maybe even the thing before that. They're using the thing from like twelve years ago. <laughs> the thing before the thing before the thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know what we always say about Windows XP around here is um, they made it too good for its own good. Right? <laughs> Well, partly That's a nice it's because problem to have, I guess, but partly it it's is. because of the negative response to Vista. Right. But then Windows Seven came out, which I don't think anybody disagrees is probably the is well. This, by the way, Vista is why XP is so popular. Right. Uh, XP right. as a first ship was not very good, actually, and people forget all this stuff. No, but it was service full of pack two. Problems. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, right. Yeah. XP I mean, was, service pack two could have been called a whole new operating system. Yes. Right? yes. And, and probably I, should I have been. Now I bet they wish they had called it a new operating yeah. system. Well, and Steve Gibson right. hails that because that was the yeah. that was the upgrade where they, Microsoft decided to turn on the firewall uh, yep. by default, and that changed a lot of the of the uh, security issues on the web. I mean, it was a very important yeah. update. Yeah, yeah. Sir, on server too, by the way. Yeah. Uh, that was. Yeah. As big as However, I, I expect a slew of calls, if people even pay attention, because, what, March or April, um, XP stops getting yeah. updates. Actually, right. you know what? That's when the calls go away because people will say, oh, you know, I, I have no problem with Windows <laughs> Update. <laughs> April uh, 2014, right, is when this happened. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I think this was foretold in the Bible. What was the name of this? Um, <laughs> Something about frogs falling from the sky. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I, there are horsemen involved, I think. <laughs> Uh, what do you think? Will it be just, uh, this is off topic again, and given that we have, you know, plenty of time, uh, <laughs> no problem. But yep. what do you think will be the security ramifications come May and June with XP not being updated? There certainly are holes. I mean, it, it is, is, let's face, face it. off, right? Does Microsoft yeah. cave again Yeah. and continue right. support? Right. Well, if or it's, do they not cave and then potentially open up millions? How many, what percentage did you say were 29%. On 30%, 30 of 1.5 billion people. That's half, five, that's half a billion people. Yes. That's how many that's people are right? 400 million people. That's I don't think they're going to cave again, though. I, I really don't think they are. But imagine an internet with 400 million connected computers that have yeah. the late... So, you know, the first guy right. to come so, up with an I mean, exploit I, for XP in May. It would be of Microsoft not to release security fixes for things that could have the potential to damage the internet. Yeah. And here's Apple. Or here. they do... Or they do something mm -hmm. like they make them super expensive, but they issue them and they say, if you want them, right. pay. No, but to, but the give yeah. them a free they copy have, if, of Windows if, 8 point, whatever. That's the thing to do. You know? yeah. Why not do that? Because a lot of them won't upgrade to it. They, do an they amnesty have, program. They're yeah. having problems right. with their peripherals it's and stuff. It's just like immigration. And... We're going to solve it the same way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bring us your guns and Windows XP and or Windows XP. And we'll help you. <laughs> we'll give you Windows 8.1. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, it's not compelling. <laughs> it's really. I mean, really Mi much Microsoft betrayed, but... last last year in 2013, they told their channel, their channel partners, their resellers, their systems integrators. They said, "Your number one mission in 2014 is to get these people off XP. However, you have to do it. Right. That's your marching orders. Right. Get them yeah. off the operating yeah. system." But I look in the and, window of my of the banks here. You know, they leave the computers yep. on at night. They're all running Windows XP on the desks. Yeah, every yep. one of them. Um, I guess the IT department probably thinks we'll keep we'll, we'll keep them safe. Yeah, uh, a lot of people. Th I've had people say, "Well, you know, unless Microsoft encourages people to attack it, um, nothing's going to happen." I think that's just sticking your head in the sand, pretty much. Microsoft said, "If you're if you're running XP after 2014, you're in a perpetual zero day state, as far Good as they're Lord. concerned." Lord. Yep. This could be, this really could be an Armageddon. I mean, all it takes is one guy to find an exploit, and on you know April 9th, the day after, right, and that exploit gets widely disseminated. Then you've got 400 million plus computers that are uh, absolutely helpless. And I hope it's going to be based on Visual Basic three. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be the VB DLL. We found an yeah, VB Run three hundred DLL. Three hundred. Yeah. I'd be if I were a hacker, I'd be working on it right now. Well, because you actually they don't have to work. I'm on sure it. they are. They have them. They have. I guarantee you, they have a, a, a chest load full of ass. You know, exploits. Yeah, it, it's possible that the embarrassing thing that comes out of this is the outing of the companies that are still XP heavy. Right. right? That some major company will be hacked because they're running Windows XP. And it will, there, be, it will be silly. Our major major enterprises, I believe, including banks and insurance companies that are running XP. 
in, in no, the grade. Sure, right. yeah. And doctors and hospitals and dentists. Yeah. And, yeah. No, yeah. absolutely. Right. They're major, major critical, uh, mission critical uh, systems running Windows XP. This, I mean, this isn't in your list, but certainly one of the predictions that is absolutely going to come true in 2014 is going to be, and I say this every year, and it's gotten worse every year, the year of the hacker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, uh, Crypto Locker is uh, small potatoes. Yep. What so happens? We do have some hacking stuff that we're never going to get to based on how we're doing right, so far. All right, moving along. Chromebooks. <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute. No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh... The old Windows guard continues to flee yeah. or be pushed. We should mention this because uh, we've talked about th this a little bit on the show before. So two two of the longtime Windows engineering chiefs have left the building at, at Microsoft. Um, John Devon, who was the lead uh, on Windows 7 and, and also Windows 8, I believe, as and far as... Uh, he was the guy that sent out the letter, congrats, we did it, yep. to the employees. Uh, State right. So he's out. He left Microsoft uh, at the end of the year. And so did Grant George, who headed up testing. So the team that was building Windows 7 and Windows 8 was um, Stephen Sanofsky, John Devon, Grant George, and Julie Larson Green. And the only one left at Microsoft now is Julie. And the rest are gone. This happened, uh, Paul will probably remember this. This happened uh, when Microsoft did Vista. Right after Vista shipped, yeah. everybody oh, yeah. who was connected with that also left. <laughs> so, or, or at least pushed. left Windows, I don't know. yeah. Right, they left Well, John Windows Devon, le like, he was kind of bumped out of the Windows org a few months ago, he but was. now you're saying he's gone right. from Microsoft. Yeah, he, he's gone from yeah. Microsoft. Grant George, also gone from Microsoft. These guys aren't going to another team. Right. They are They're totally gone. out. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, and... and uh, Hal Berenson wrote a good post today. He used to work at Microsoft as one of the distinguished engineers. And he said, you know, everybody has different views on what this means. I can tell you these guys were really good engineers. And they're out now. So take that as you will. Um, don't just necessarily celebrate it as they were the scapegoats and now they're gone and everything's going to be better. Because they were good engineers. But Terry well, Myerson's running. I, yeah. Terry Myerson's running the show now, right? He's running the Unified Operating Systems team at Microsoft. He's brought in his own guys, and it's a whole different cast of characters now. I don't think about it as celebrating. I I, I certainly have yeah. no personal animosity toward any of these people. I, I It's interesting. I mean, yeah. obviously someone like Steven Sanofsky was very divisive and polarizing. Um but everyone else, you know, I, I, do you think that maybe align. they're they're going off with Steven Sanofsky to start a podcast? I wonder or something? that. Yeah, start a, <laughs> start a podcast. Yeah, they're going to start a Windows <laughs> podcast. That would be awesome. A little nervous. I am. I'll yeah. I'll tell you right now. They could be. They could be. Um, or a startup. Perhaps they're all going to get the band back together again. Isn't well, that what's anything? That these guys have proven they don't know much about Windows, so we don't have anything to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, hey, here's a business. They could start a business supporting XP. Yeah. That would be good, maybe. <laughs> could a, thir a third party could provide patches. We're going to make pretty good business. safe for the web. That would be a good business. <laughs> well, that is a business. It's called Chrome. You know, I, <laughs> I think the way you make uh, oh, Windows yeah. XP safe online is you, you put you start Chrome using on Chrome. Yeah. Or a Chromebook. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Before we talk about the Chromebook, <laughs> let's mention Windows. I'm sorry, the Lumia 520. You got oh, an article yeah. this about is, this. I like the so, 520. That's the sweet spot phone, isn't it? Yeah, I tried to. I tried to avoid a bunch of um, 2013 wrap-up type stories. You know, I did one for Windows IT Pro where I talked about the cloud and so forth, but. Um, I did write a story about Windows Phone and about how this was such a de decisive year for it and how important uh, Nokia is to the ecosystem, how important this particular device is. You know, if you, not that chart there, but if you look, if you were to look at uh, worldwide use, Windows Phone, it's not in the article, I apologize, it's just in text. I don't have a chart of it, but Windows Phone 8 handsets used worldwide, the percentage that are either a Lumia 520 or a derivative of the 520, 54%. 54% wow. of all Windows phones actually being used are of devices that have been on the market for about six months and cost $100 or less. That's the key, the price point. It's right? amazing, yeah. right? And uh, it's I've good not written enough. this story yet, but I will write a story soon about the importance of uh, unsubsidized phones yeah. um, in the, to the marketplace because yep. this week... 
big news stories. We don't have it in here, but uh, Motorola made the Motorola X available unsubsidized for three. I think it was three ninety nine. Yeah, they have a Motorola. I don't know. I don't even know their model. The G. Ups, I'm sorry. The G is one seventy nine. Um, you can get a Nexus 5 for 349 yep. yep. And you can get a the Lumia 520, $99, you know, roughly. So there you have your little range of uh, low-end, mid-level, mid -level, and kind of high-end phone, the Moto X being the high-end one. Um, I think that this kind of thing is going to revolutionize um, the smartphone market this year. I think this is going to be one of the biggest things that happens this year is this kind of thing. It's I think good they're huge, enough. Yeah. Not just good enough, but in the case of the Moto X, a great phone. It's my phone. Uh, great, I could. Yeah. I have every high-end phone there is, except the 1020. Yeah. And uh, and I choose the Moto X as the one to carry around. Uh, there are other things about the Moto X that I think are really interesting. They don't have to, a lot to do with unsubsidized. You know, the fact you can customize it and so forth. But um, I do think this is going to change everything. I think the uh, the clear loser here is going to be Apple from a market share perspective because they don't want to play this game. Yeah. And then the big question mark is going to be Windows Phone and how this impacts Windows Phone because. Uh, the 520 has sold really well, as have the 521, 525, whatever. Uh, but these phones cost like $99. So um, you're selling a lot more of them, but I don't know that they're making money on them. And so it's a very interesting story, um, and we'll see how that goes. But certainly for this year, the 520 has been the biggest thing um, that's happened to Windows Phone ever. It's, it's humongous. And then the next big story really should be inexpensive data plans. I think the company, these, these cell companies are yeah. really taking advantage of Well, and they're doing it, right? So you're starting to see that. T-Mobile did it first. AT yeah. Verizon are copying them. $30, $30 a month. That's the price. Yep. I want $150, $200 phone, to make sense. $30 a month. Even for someone like me, I have two phones that are on plans. Uh, you know, like I have a sort of a family share plan I do by myself because I'm an army of one. But I... <laughs> I mean, too. <laughs> Except you know. I foolishly, it didn't work for me because I put them all in different carriers. No, sorry, that's not wise. But um, it's expensive, <laughs> and I don't use I, the minimums aren't minimal enough. You know, if if I actually paid for what I used, I would save a lot of money every month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, this change, yes, but you're I think unusual because you those are not phones. You, I mean, they're they're testers. No, I, <laughs> excuse me, I know that, but um, you know, right now I'm using a 1020 as my daily driver. I've been using that for a long, long time now, but. Um, I, I do use a phone like a normal person. I mean, I you know, what my normal phone is there, too. So I have other phones that I test. Right. But I can swap SIMs out and use a different phone, and that's how I test things. But <coughs> it's amazing to me that, you know, I'm fairly tech savvy. I like to think I have my finger in the, the pie there a little bit. But I don't come even close to using my allotment. And I, I could go much lower on things like oh, I'm the same way. text messaging, calling especially. Well, that's why Ting is a great deal. You pay for what you use. <laughs> There are MVNOs like Ting, where public wireless is being very aggressive in its yeah. pricing. And I think that those bottom feeders are going to end up really uh, sticking it to, and T-Mobile too, although yeah, if uh, Sprint yeah. buys T-Mobile oh, by and say goodbye to another big that. change on the Windows phone front. I don't remember the statistic, but uh, T-Mobile is now the second biggest carrier for eight, uh, for uh, Windows phone in the United States after AT&T. They suppressed Verizon this year yeah, because they sell a 521, there, there which is you go. Those. Verizon doesn't have one. There you go. I actually we almost wanna... have nothing on Verizon still. <laughs> no. They are not yeah. a friendly carrier. Right. Not getting uh, to, better. To, to, getting to manufacturers, better. not to humans, but to but to the phone manufacturers. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, they really, maybe because they keep a tight lid on their network or something, I don't know. But they really, uh, maybe they, maybe because they want bigger subsidies, I don't know. Mm. Can we talk about Chromebook uh, now? They're supposed to get... What, no. What, wait, it's all let, right. me, let me ask Paul one thing. Uh, when are yep. we supposed to get that Lumia 920? Is it the 920 or the 925? 929, the, the Verizon one. The 929. That was supposed yeah. to come when out in November. Getting... I don't That's know right. what happened. I know. That. Yeah. that didn't come out yet? No. Basically, what that phone is is they a... They sent um, me a review unit. I played with it, and they still have yeah. a release. It's, it's, nope, a, it's a 1020 style phone, uh, oh. but it has, I think it's a 5-inch screen. I was thinking screen. the 928. You're talking the 920. Yeah, yeah. Okay, the 929. No, and yeah. it has the camera from the 1520. It's like the 25 I megapixel know. version. Oh, that's, that's the one I want. Pass. That would be I want. nice. Yes, I, uh, that's the one. That looks fantastic. That, and that was more than a rumor? That was... Uh, did oh, it's happening. Yeah, it's, it's still going to... It will still happen, but you know... I bet they of, talk about it at CES. That would be my bet. Yeah. I don't know why that hasn't happened. That's so silly. I think we're going to see a lot of uh, phone news at CES. Although, usually yeah. companies wait till Mobile World Congress a few months later. Oh, yeah. But right. nowadays, it's such a... 
fast-paced competitive business that we're seeing iterations on phones every few months instead of every year. Mm -hmm. so. In fact, I should put together a list of phones announced at last year's Mobile World Congress. Yeah. Because all of them have been, uh, you know... Uh, Are you going? You're not going to CES? Uh, no, we have people going. I'm not going to go. Yeah. Um, yeah, neither. It's, but I think, you know, I'm start. <laughs> I do this every year. I say I'm not going to go. And then yeah. I start to think, oh, maybe I should go. Because I'm starting to see some of the announcements that are coming. And the thought of going to Vegas and dealing with that crowd is not enticing to me in the slightest. Yeah. We've we've got some good people going down there, and uh, we'll we'll certainly have coverage. Uh, yeah. You know, Father Robert Balasser is uh, going down. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll, yeah. Th there's Bartolo, stuff that occurs off Scott of the Wilkinson. show in hotel rooms. Um, well, that's right. Let me rephrase that. <laughs> and that's what I go for. Oh, you're we talking have about technology meetings. companies yeah, okay. who yeah. are meeting with the press. Yes. That I would be interested in. Um, <laughs> But it's not worth flying to Vegas. Yeah, uh, uh, we're going like, to let other people do our work for us. Yeah, <laughs> thing is, it's such an overcovered show that it's not like if you don't go, you won't know exactly know. what's happening. Oh, did the something happen? Happens. I wasn't there. Please do tell. Right. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> Could you let the, let the rest of us in on it? I... Well, as long as we're on CES, uh, you're saying a couple of predictions. Uh, one that more Windows PC makers will introduce Android-based device. Will there be there? You know, was it two years ago that the hybrid Android Windows device was big? Uh, how long ago was that? That was horrible. That. Yeah. That's gone, right? Never happened. Well, there was one. They, never, they announced Asus it. Asus do something. They never did them. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody. Well, did Lenovo it. was the one that announced Lenovo. the one he's talking. Yeah. And then they didn't do it. But yes, there are. Some, I'm sorry. There are some now. Um, and we, what will we see? Hybrids, or will we see dedicated Android devices? I bet hybrids, but I don't know for a fact. Yeah. Frankenstein's monsters. I know. I I, I want to meet somebody who uses this or wants to use it. And then make them because, explain themselves. Right. That's what I mean. I want, yeah, to, I want no them to tell me why. Uh, and I know so they're going to say apps, right? But... <laughs> So well, run BlueStacks, right? I guess I, I don't. I, this is I don't. This kind of thing doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, no. But I think we're going to see that. I, or, and also, people like HP announcing Chromebooks yeah. and or, and Android specific um, devices right. too. People who've been Windows partners. Our industry's version of Judas, you mean? <laughs> I'll, I'll just keep bringing the Bible on this for some reason. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've been doing a lot of reading and thinking and soul searching, Paul, of the last yes. few days. Right. I can tell. I've gone he back has. to the classics this week, Leo. <laughs> it's a Bible. Does your he's, reading he's, list say Gideon on the Bible, it. Julius Caesar? You know what his pick what book pick of the week is gonna be. We're gonna find tell. out soon. <laughs> right. The Bible. Hi, Claudius. <laughs> there are so many Bibles on the oh, there Audible. Are. Oh I know, gosh, there are. yeah. There are. Um so. I just want to go get through Deuteronomy on my walk, you know, like <laughs> <laughs> and Lotus and begets, beget, Paul <laughs> beget, beget, yeah, whatever. That's good. That would be good. Yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah, and Visicalc begat Lotus one two three, <laughs> yes. which cool. begat yeah. Excel, right. which begat a million typos. Yeah. Um, we will uh, now. Microsoft stopped having a booth last year at CES. They're not going to be there this year, right? They're going to be there uh, um, in, in, in like in Paul's suites. back room back suites, rooms, but yeah, yeah. no keynotes or anything like that. No, not even a keynote. No. no. Didn't Steve Ballmer do like a farewell keynote last year? Maybe not. A couple of years ago, right? Two, last you know, year, two years ago, because last year was when he, he showed up at, uh, there was nothing. Was it Qualcomm's? Uh, yeah, he was in Qualcomm's uh, keynote. Yep. You know, yeah. So, so uh, any Microsoft presence at CES will be muted. Very muted. Yeah. Um, although Microsoft doesn't always have to go, since, as you point out, manufacturers go. Um, we mentioned the eight-inch tablets, mm -hmm. um, and uh, Internet of Things. <laughs> I think you're, we all agree is going to be. You know, where where it's going to be? There's going to be a lot. Of, remember, CES is all about the future. It's not about what's available today, but what right. might be available in the fall if enough people show interest. So watches and other wearables. Uh, mm -hmm. Wired giant up. TVs. Giant TVs will all be there. Cars, OLED, you know, entertainment systems and cars, yeah. all that junk. Yeah. Uh, and Tech Radar says uh, the Internet of Things. Yeah. I hate that phrase, by the way. I know. The, I do too. The Internet of Things. Yeah. Who came up with that? 
Get the torches, Leo. We're going to this guy's house. <laughs> it is an interesting phrase. It is. Um, what we are it's seeing... It's as nebulous as cloud computing. ...is a move yep. of... As calorie-free as a donut. Computing power is no longer centralized, but it's moving to the periphery. And what we're not seeing is a spoke and hub model, but rather a peer-to-peer -peer model of smart stuff. Yes, it's called chaos, Leo. <laughs> oh, that. <laughs> <laughs> the chaos Ugh. begins. Um, I'm, I'm going to see who, who coined that. I'm looking yeah, in the, the Internet of Things. Kevin Ashton, 1999 of Kevin Ashton. He's not Ashton Tate, is he? No, that no. was another Ashton. Is it? No, no. Kevin Ashton. The Internet of Things. He, it was in the RFID Journal. Oh, wow. He was the very first? According to Wikipedia, you know Wikipedia never lies. But They're this, always right. This is a 1999 article. That's If he wasn't the first, he was early. The Internet of Things. Well, for some thing. reason, though, this phrase has run this year. Like it's... Yeah, well, we, the, you know, 1999, it was, uh, it was just a yeah. twinkle. In Even the Ashton's Internet was eye. not understood. Yeah, so the right. Internet of Things right. was probably pretty early. further misunderstood. Yeah. Yep. It's, uh, he, he's a British technology pioneer who co-founded the Auto ID Center at MIT. Oh, wow. wow. So, yeah, he was big into RFID, and that's why he would have coined that term, right? Yeah, right. Sensors yeah. and all that for the Internet of Things. Uh, I always loved that idea. You know, I remember someone telling me the story that you would go to a supermarket, and they would have these little micro tags on everything. And if you were registered with the supermarket, they would have your credit card information, whatever. You could bag your stuff. And just walk out the door, and as you walk through, you would be charged, because all of the little items would have their little tags on them, and they would know exactly what you bought. Mm -hmm. And what a wonderful system this would be! <laughs> I'm uh, still waiting. For this Walmart land. tried to in insist on that. Remember, I some years ago they said every yeah. all of our suppliers have to put. Has anyone used a self checkout counter at a supermarket yeah, and once. had it actually work? No, ever. The <laughs> irony I of broke it down is, here is the first time I try to use one of these. Every things. time you <laughs> use it, a human being has to come over yes. and fix it. Every time. Every time. Every so time. So the net gain is zero. I think so. I don't know. I just... You don't have fewer I, I find it very frustrating. Yeah. <laughs> I'm serious. The, the, uh, the worst one I used was at a drugstore where it announced everything in a very loud voice. Yes. <laughs> Condoms, <laughs> extra small. Right. 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 Anti-flatulence medicine. Bob, no, how much magnesia. is the anti-flatulence? <laughs> Gas anti-flatulence in a mm -hmm. robotic Gentleman voice. Here. That was a bad idea. Never used that anymore. But a lot of people in the chat room say they use it. Um, I don't even know if we have it here. I in New York, I don't think they oh, trust us. They don't trust because you just walk out the door. <laughs> you know, yeah, sure, whatever. I've never seen see one here. Like, imitating the beeping sounds of the machine, and then they walk out with a mouthful of food. <laughs> Here's your print. You know, they rip off a blank piece of paper and walk out the door with it. Somebody in the chat room said, and "This is true. It makes you, self checkout makes you appreciate the checker more." Yes, yeah. the live human. Who knew that these people were some kind of expert? You yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's a real skill. Um. All right, Chromebooks, NPD. Yes. Did a little press release saying that Chromebooks had dominated sales in 2013. I think they said yeah. that 21 uh, percent well. of all PCs sold, PCs and tablets, were Chromebooks. Yeah. Except story. that's not really what they said. No, <laughs> they spun out of control. This, this is like that Amazon drone story, it <laughs> is. where this taken out of context is complete baloney. It's it, it's not yeah. what happened. Well, what did happen, Mary Jo Paul Theron? For, well, first, I, I got to point out, the, the number that they were talking about was business-to-business -business sales. So it's sales in the channel. It wasn't Commercial sales. Commercial channel computing consumers. device. Right. Yeah. It got reported everywhere as 20% uh, of all laptop sales were Chromebooks. Yeah, I feel I, guilty because I said that. Everywhere. Yeah, and I should yep, have read everywhere. the actual it, NPD report. They, it, it, and the subheadline was always, they're destroying the Mac. That, By the way, that is not true. That's you not saw the, 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 the iPad. Mac? The I saw iPad. Microsoft. Yeah, but the, but every, most people said Microsoft should really be scared about Chromebooks. This is right. this is this justifies the Pawn Stars ads and the, all of that because 
They legitimately should be terrified. Mm -hmm. uh, well, <laughs> all I'm saying is that 20% figure is incorrect. That's all. Right. I, did right. Chromebook take 5% of the PC market in the United States? You know, whatever. I don't know. I, neither does NPD, apparently, because they didn't write a story about it. But NPD only measures retail sales in the United States. That's all they measure. It's They're right. accurate. Microsoft uses them, by the way. Microsoft trusts NPD. Right. These numbers are accurate. But they're for a very specific market. And this particular report was for a very specific kind of sale. Not sales to end users, not sales at retail to people or whatever, B2B sales. So... Now, now, all that said, should Microsoft be nervous? Sure. They, they should yes. be nervous about anything that's coming into the market, right? And, and I've seen a lot of reports saying the market that's really picking up on Chromebooks is the education market. And if that's so, they should be afraid, right? Because they need to dominate that market. And they have never really done so. I mean, Apple's yeah. on that market much more than Microsoft. You don't want people who are going to be entering the computer, uh, the market as adults to be right. learning on Chromebooks. <laughs> you know, I mean... Uh, for the same reason that you as Microsoft don't want them to be learning on iPads or whatever. Like, you, it's the same thing. You don't want their early formu you know, for, uh, formative computer years to be spent on competing devices. Right. Uh, but, yeah, the, those headlines just spun out of control. And then it was coupled with, I saw another report, a separate report saying the best selling, the two best selling models of computers on Amazon.com were Chromebooks. Did you see that one, Paul? No, I didn't. <laughs> And, uh, that's been again, the case for a long time. Right. That's been the case. And it, that's about price, right? Like, yeah. that is totally about price. Yeah. People want to like buy netbook a cheap sales. Yeah. It's yeah, exactly it and, like and netbook sales. I, I wonder what the two most, uh, the top two most return computer devices are on Amazon.com. I, <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if they were Chromebooks. Right. Right. But you don't really see them publicizing that kind of data. No. And there, there is a group of people for whom these are good and fine and just the right device i think but Shut -ins? i what think kind of people we're talking about uh, i think i think children <laughs> i think i think yeah. my mom would be okay with a chromebook i do i, I, I mean she by the way there are exceptions do to everything to but i think yeah. most normal people if, you know if you will just to really generalize yeah would be better off with yeah. a tablet yeah you know that's all yeah. I, I think that's the point i the problem with the chromebook is you look at it and you see you, you see computer see pc Right. It, it's a la, it's a it's a web browser with a keyboard attached to it, and um, I do think that Chromebook, because it has and will continue to improve, is going to get better, um, and will become more and more applicable and more and more of a of something you can compare accurately to Windows or the Mac or whatever as a competitor, you know. Um, but as of Christmas 2013, no, no, not right. yet. Yep. So just a 20%. word of caution. 20%. <laughs> yeah, I Sorry. took this past week off and I saw those headlines and I was like... You were fuming. I could feel your try anger. Not to write about <laughs> I love well, it when I, it's okay. I, and I really should check with you before we repeat stories like that. <laughs> no, it's just... You know, why? No, it, it, it's, I, I saw somebody talking to Stephen Baker from N MPD on Twitter saying, you guys should have had somebody vet that release. And he's like, yeah. if you've read the release, it actually said what we were talking yeah. about. But people just jump on things yeah, and when they want to write a quick right. headline, right? Yeah. You can't it's getting more, and more, it's getting more and more like that, you know, because the uh, news right. cycle or whatever, the, the need for speed is so high now. Yeah. It's a telephone game. And, uh, and frankly... <laughs> I'm going to have to up my game, and I know, you know, we've kind of upped our news game here in general because we got to vet all this stuff now. You can't just, you know, right. read these stories. <laughs> uh, it's also hilarious to read something you write as, a, as an author and see other people rewrite it and yeah. just completely mangle yeah. what you said. And, and so then you're like, and get wait. The, and the link bait headline and, yeah. and, let's, and, we, and then they get all the love. This, let, yep. Let's take it to the next level. I'm sure you've gotten this one as well. And if you haven't, I'm going to break down and start crying immediately because I get this all the time. Mm -hmm. Paul, have you seen this? Yeah. And it's a link to some blog. Yeah. Yeah. Who <laughs> covered a story that I wrote. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Rehashed it. Paul would it's be like, interested no, actually, to hear this. I see that blog's version of what I wrote. But <laughs> I thank Paul you would for, be very thank interested you for thinking enough of me to forward it to me. I am going to, I, you have my vow, my New Year's resolution, because I fell for that story, uh, because I didn't read the original source. And usually I try to do that, try to click through to the actual. I, in this it's case, hard honestly, to find. yeah, you, this, this one was uh, viral. Like, it was 
kind of mindlessly repeated on every tech blog on well, Earth. And then, without, and then that gives it credence. So I read it in 400 right, times. It's everywhere. And and I think like, it must well, be true. true. Oh, no. Right. That's what I mean. And this is, from my perspective, I'm sure from Mary Jo's as well, I, this kind of thing is damaging to all of us. Like, it's just not accurate. And, um, and then if you refute it, you're being a Microsoft apologist. Yep, right. Well, of course you would right. think that. <laughs> right. Right. Well, well what I'm data like, do you have to suggest otherwise? Yeah. I'm like, but I'm not saying not Surface is better. I'm just <laughs> saying this isn't what the number says, but okay. <laughs> this just in, almost 100 million people are in the path of a big snowstorm back east. <laughs> uh, uh, do you read that on a blog? I'm reading on CNN. <laughs> right after they did the story, you know, the middle really? class can no longer afford Red Lobster. Really? Wow. There's apparently a Red Lobster index. <laughs> where, where, are the, where are the people going to get those cheesy bread things? Olive Garden. Oh, no, they can't afford that either. <laughs> it's not the same, Leo. <laughs> um... <laughs> I just want to be better than that. That's all. And I don't want to repeat those things. So I'm my, I'm going to get serious. Blizzard warning expected with winds. 100 <laughs> yes. million people. No snow. no snow here yet. <laughs> no snow. Hey, let me do a little tech prediction. I'm going to be shoveling in within 24 <laughs> hours. Oh, my Boston Red Sox sled activities were canceled. Oh, that's, I don't understand. Uh, yeah, that's what they call it, Boston Red Sox sled activities. <laughs> <laughs> because there's going to be too much snow, you can't go sledding. You can't go, so, you can't go sledding, there's too yeah. much snow. Okay, uh, I'm okay. Okay. A, there's too much snow, you can't sled. It's crazy. It's a crazy thing. I don't song. understand it. No, they're afraid you'll get trapped in Fenway. Boston Red Sox that's sled activities. That's my activity. dream, to get trapped in Fenway. <laughs> I want to stay there till next spring when they start the hot dogs boiling. Right. <laughs> With the snow. <laughs> they, met, they take the snow melt and they boil the dogs. They take the dog, right. That explains <laughs> a lot. <It's> a... They <laughs> never stop those dogs boiling. They boil all summer. Surface, the original. I don't know why you'd buy the original, but I guess two ninety nine is some uh, incentive. Yeah. Yeah. I would still, still buy a Surface. Mine. Right, yeah, you are, yeah. Yeah. Um, I've kind yeah, of switched to the Mini. I've been using the Dell. I, I, I've moved to the Mini. Really? One. You like the Venue Pro? Yeah. Yeah, yeah with it, Windows 8.1, Surface RT, is it's usable. You know, it's not super fast, but it's definitely usable. And it's just as good using Notepad as anything else. It is. Notepad is a rock on my <laughs> server. Notepad yeah. never, what, what did you call it? Uh, headboards? <laughs> Right dashboards. Now. Dashboarding. It no longer dash <laughs> oh, right, right, never right, right. dashboards. Never dashboards. dashboarding. Maybe uh, if they put notepad on Xbox One, uh, Mary Jo would get an Xbox. I know. Everybody says that. It'd be <laughs> tempting. Why don't they? Somebody's going to do that. Good. I am waiting. It seems like the app store is laggard there on the Xbox One. It seems like the, the I'm, there's just some apps they ought to have by now. Mm. HBO Go being one of them. Oh, I did, are there apps other than Call of Duty, Leo? I haven't noticed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I thought it was just dedicated hardware for Call of Duty. Skype's Twitter account was hacked by a pro-Syrian hacker group. <laughs> That's awesome. I know. That's kind of crazy. <laughs> what did they say? Capitalism Stop pigs. Spying. Skype must Stop die. Spying. Did they? Oh, Skype. that may not be a ha pro-Syrian hacker group. It could be anybody. It was the right. Syrian Electronic Army who did it. Right? Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> I've heard about them. I don't know if they're actually from Syria. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think they are, but I don't know. Yeah. Well, no one knows. If they did, they didn't know where to find them. Yeah, so they got hacked yesterday, and the tweet, and their twi Twitter, Facebook, and, and the Skype blog all got hacked. Really? All at once? Yeah, wow. uh, and then it said, stop spying on us with Skype, and also said, stop using Outlook.com and Hotmail. We're going to have more on that later, kind of wow. hinting they're going to do something else. Yeah. I'd uh, like to take this moment to announce my next book, which will be about <laughs> Outlook.com and Hotmail. 
<laughs> I do. I do love that. Uh, the, apparently, according to Der Spiegel, the NSA was spying on uh, crash Windows crash reports. Sure. Those dumps files. <laughs> That's actually not a horrible idea. Um, What's in there that you could use? Well, innards about how Windows works, right? Gets revealed by them. I think. I think it was Peter who. Oh, uh, looking for looking for flaws. In other words. Yeah. In other words, I guess these things are sent in the clear, right? So you can intercept mm -hmm. the crash reports. Yeah. Yeah. They're not encrypted. The crash reports are not encrypted. Right. Interesting. Yeah. So, yeah, just more fodder for why everything needs this to be This is the NSA backdoor into Windows. It's the crash reports. Yep. We were just looking in the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> there's no, there's none of my data in the crash report, though. Yeah. Isn't there, Leo? <laughs> 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 I don't know. Actually, that's a good. I don't know. Yeah, maybe there is sometimes. There's, uh, it, there's no identifying data, right? It, they can't tell it's you, right? But they can tell like it's a computer running set program. So, right. The they question is, you. it would it, it, tie it to all the other stuff. The, the, yeah. uh, it's I just, the Internet of Things, Leo. That's how they find yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, they can, you know, it's not yeah. so hard to figure out who you are. It really isn't. Um, and, of course, we saw the story that NSA was w intercepting hardware deliveries, embedding spy stuff in them, and then sending them on. That actually explains why my UPS stuff comes at 7.30 at night. <laughs> <laughs> it took us a little while. Like, this Throck guy seems to be in pretty tight with Microsoft. Maybe we should be spying on him. He gets a lot of stuff. I think we better check him yeah, out. Yeah, he does get a lot of stuff. That's true. <laughs> You mentioned it as a uh, code name of the week a couple of weeks ago, Midori, mm -hmm. the melon ball operating system. Exactly. Ooh. What is Midori, and uh, why is it Microsoft's other operating system? Yeah, so there, this was another interesting report that happened over the holidays. So Midori, I've, I've written about it a few times, and it's Microsoft. It's an operating system being developed at Microsoft that is not Windows-based. It's based on a microkernel that's not Windows at all. Hmm. And there's a whole team at Microsoft who's been working on this for at least five years, maybe longer. And the reason it came up this weekend was uh, one of the people on the Midori team, Joe Duffy, posted on his personal blog a whole bunch of information about the language that they've been developing alongside Midori. And the code name of that language is M Sharp. Uh, so M, suddenly, M Sharp, not C Sharp, but M Sharp. M -sharp. Right. And M Sharp is just basically a derivative of C Sharp huh. that I believe is tailored to run on multiprocessing systems. Interesting. Uh, so he, this has been pretty secretive up till now. And suddenly on December 27th, he dumps all this stuff about M Sharp onto his blog, which was kind of strange. Uh, so I, I asked a couple of my sources what was going on. And they said, we've heard the Midori team has now moved under Terry Meyerson to the operating systems group at Microsoft. So supposedly, Terry Meyerson's job now is to look at all this work they've been doing on Midori and deciding how it fits into Microsoft's future operating systems vision. Uh, so th these two things that happen, not exactly simultaneously, but pretty close in time, are leading a lot of people to wonder, why did Joe Duffy suddenly put all this information out there? And what does it mean about Midori? Is Microsoft going to do something with it? Are they going to just kind of keep it in its own separate space as a research type incubation project? Are they going to take parts of Midori and move them into the Windows group somehow and do stuff with it? Um, there's a lot of questions and not a lot of answers. But at least we know, or at least we think we know, Midori's alive. And the M Sharp language may actually be released as open source at some point in the near term. Very which interesting. Is kind of crazy. Yeah. Mm, very interesting. Yeah. Uh, we're going to take a break. When we come back, tips, picks, and more. A reminder, if uh, you like Windows Weekly, and who doesn't, if you, in fact, love Windows Weekly, and who doesn't, that next week will be at a new time. We are going to be Wednesdays instead of Thursdays at 11 a.m. Pacific. Same time, new day, I should say. What do they say in the networks? Windows Weekly moves to a new day, but plenty of <laughs> wacky laughs coming up. <laughs> 11 the same wacky laughs. The same old fun and games. Just a new day. A very special new day. Uh, hump Day, Wednesday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 a.m., 2 p.m. <laughs> Eastern, 1900 UTC. Um, now Microsoft's going to change the day they announce their corporate earnings. I figure this will, you know? this will change. This changes everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I figure that's it. It's a must-see Wednesday. 
<laughs> anyway, uh, just a reminder, uh, next week, starting next week, Wednesdays instead of Thursdays, but all the same fun. Our show today brought to you by Audible.com, the greatest source of audiobooks the world, the galaxy has ever known. I'm an Audible lover, and so is Paul. We have yet to get Mary Jo listening, but we will. Someday. There's a few. There's always a holdout. And, you know, I'll be honest. Not everybody uh, it loves audiobooks, but if you do, you know what we're talking about here. It is, And, and I figure since a lot of you listen to the show, you probably are ready for Audible.com. Listening is a great way to read when you can't hold a book, like uh, at the gym, on the treadmill, or while you're driving, walking the dog. Yep. Uh, it is a, a hundred, th I think it's more than 150,000 now, books at audible.com. And all the new stuff always comes out. So when the new book is out, uh, you could pretty much, like the new John Grisham Sycamore Row, been listening to that. That's awesome. Uh, you can immediately go there and, uh, and download it and listen to it. I've been listening, right now I'm listening to the a book you recommended a couple of weeks ago, The uh, Everything Store, The Story of Amazon, mm -hmm. that Brad Stone just wrote, and uh, what a great book. In fact, I've been really kind of inspired by Jeff Bezos' uh, philosophies, and the book really talks about it. Uh, it is such a good book. What are you listening to, Paul? Well, if you've been, if anyone was paying attention to what I listened to last year, I listened to a lot of Stephen King, and I kind of joked about it, and promised I would eventually get off of that kick and and I did and now I'm listening to books written by Stephen King's son uh, Joe Hill. <laughs> well, that's um, diversity. Actually, I I I was really curious as if this was a good book. Yeah, so I've read a couple of his now and I'm I've actually got a third uh queued up which is all short stories. Um Nosferatu and the one I just finished is called Horns or Horn, I don't remember but um, they're it's both such a good name because Stephen King, they're Stephen King books. And I, yeah. I mean, they're, you know, it's like reading a Stephen King book. I mean, they're kind of amazing they, and they share some similarities with Stephen King and that they're, they're a little overly long, uh, both of them, Horns and uh, Nosferatu, but they're both, <laughs> both got a great supernatural, I guess you'd call them a horror stories, but, um, uh, Nosferatu in particular is really good and it's narrated by Kate Mulgrew and I, Oh, I love her. The, the Captain, reading is fantastic. Uh, from, uh, yeah. yeah, Next Generation. Yeah, yeah. Uh, from Janeway, yeah. And also Captain from Janeway. Orange is the New Black, if you watch that on uh, Netflix. Oh, she's red. She's red, yeah. Oh, she's so good in that show. Yeah. So what's interesting is I, I had read a Stephen King, or listened to a Stephen King short story over the summer that I think was called The Gingerbread Man or something like that. And mm -hmm. I, I thought this was the same person. I really loved the reading on this. And actually, the person who read that other book was... Uh, Oh, geez, Mayor Willingham or something, some name like that. Some uh, it's a name I don't really recognize, but um, this book is fantastic. And it's uh, it, the reading in particular, I should say, uh, is what puts it over the top. So kind of a Christmas themed um, vampire kind of thing. <laughs> and it has, you have to really pay attention, but there's a, there's a quickie tie in to Stephen King's latest book. Which was uh, the dream? Uh, it's nice of his son to do that. Yeah, cool. It was kind of a cool thing. And the reason that's kind of special is because if you read all of the Stephen King stuff, you know that he references his other books as if they're events that happen in a real world. So he'll talk about the dog that attacks some people up in Derry, and he'll mention this town, or he'll you know have, play, have books to take place in the same place and so forth. And so uh, he his son kind of did that with this book, where again very briefly, but created this situation where what's happening in this book in this world occurred in the same world as of the the world of the shining and uh, mm. um the, the sleep doctor it's a world so, of its, it's own good, good yeah yeah captain janeway wasn't in the next generation that was of course patrick Stewart. no she was, she um, was in deep, sp uh, deep no, space uh, voyager no, no, not deep space voyager, voyager. Yeah. yeah like i know i don't Voyager. Yeah. Who was the original stuff. captain on Voyager? Remember they had to get rid of her really quickly? No, why? Drug problem? Uh, she didn't want to do it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it was, uh... I cannot wear this rubber headpiece any longer. Yeah, oh, geez. They shot a bunch of, like, the first show and she... Really? Yeah, let me look it That's up. That's trivia. Flip. I'll look it up. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. This is a great chance for you to get into Audible, as we have. The first one's free, kid. Go to audible.com slash windows. You can sign up for that gold account. That's going to get you uh, a month free. First book's free. 
Uh, you also get the daily uh, edition, audio edition of uh, the uh, either the New York Times or the Wall Street Journal. Another nice thing to have in your car as you're going to work. And uh, you have 30 days. If you cancel in the first 30 days, uh, you pay nothing but if and keep the book no matter what. But if you uh, decide to become an Audible member, you will join a group of many of us here at Twit who just live. I, I got to read this book, How to Run with a Naked Werewolf. <laughs> I don't even know what it's about, but I got to... Oh, it's book three of the Naked Werewolf series. That's a that's that's kind of a link bait title. <laughs> <laughs> How to Flirt with a Naked Werewolf, The Art of Seducing a Naked Werewolf, and now How to Run. I think this is a young adult book. I hope it is. Anyway, uh, audible.com. And by the way, that's a good point. Audible has all kinds of books, including books, great books for young people. Audible.com slash Windows. Try it today free for 30 days. So the actress who originally played Janeway? Yes. I'm not going to say her name correctly. I apologize. It's uh, like Genevieve Bujold. Genevieve Bujold. Genevieve. She's great. Yeah. But she's a movie guess, star. Yep. But I guess she was pretty terrible on this. She was a French <laughs> so. movie star. But Captain Janway. I'm a Captain Janway. Uh, was, was, she, was, she, was she in like Coma or what was her yeah, big Yeah, she thing? was in a Crichton. Uh, or maybe, was she the woman from? She was in a lot of French? movies. I like Genevieve Bujold. Oh, coma. She was. It was. It was coma. Coma. Yeah. She didn't have a lot of lines. No, no. She, <laughs> she, <laughs> she was one of the uh, the awake people. You oh. know, Tom Selleck was one of the people in coma. One was he coma wearing people. short shorts? Probably. It was nineteen like <laughs> seventies. There's a man I can really get behind. Our oh god, I can't believe I said that. Our show today brought to you by Audible.com, and now we move on to our tip of the week. A New Year resolution. I'm going to blow through this one because we're like an hour and a half over time. Oh, there's no, there's no time <laughs> but, uh, like Windows Weekly time. <laughs> um, you know, as we do this time of year, I always think of like New Year's resolutions and I try to apply them to kind of the tech thing. And there's a couple, I should probably just write these things up, but um, looking at the new year and, you know, kind of an attempt to remake yourself uh, from a technology perspective, uh, four things I came up with. One is just to be secure. Um, yes. Everyone seems that to use the same passwords. Dud, I might say. <laughs> well, we have some pretty good tools now, and so you should be using complex and different passwords on every single one of your online accounts, and you can manage them with LastPass or some kind of a tool like that, and back it with two-step authentication so that someone can't hack into your account and steal it. And you should be applying that two-step authentication to all of your accounts that accept it. You know, Gmail and Google do it. Microsoft does it with Microsoft accounts, SkyDrive, Outlook.com, etc. Um, Dropbox does it. I think Twitter does it. You know, lots of places do this now. And so uh, just, you know, take the steps to secure. You know, you don't want to become like the Skype guys on, on Twitter and have your account be hacked. Um, the other one, of course, is a brown backup. And uh, I, I can't <laughs> step through a backup strategy for you right now. But from a high level, I would just say you, you want to have some form of local backups. And Windows has this capability built into it. Windows 8.1 does, certainly. And uh, one that's in the cloud that's like off-site backup. And so it's like on-site, off-site. And so... Um, you want to have a backup you can access very quickly if you need to. Um, that can be local, but if your house burns down or your computer is stolen or whatever may happen, um, you want to have that uh, cloud-based thing going on as well. Um, the other one is, and I don't know if this is a big of a problem for everyone listening to this, but I tend to um, sign up for services, and then I often don't use them, including some that I even pay for. And in my position, I, I like to test things, and so I'll test all of the music services. I'll test all of the cloud storage services and all that kind of stuff. But... I think a lot of people probably do have these open accounts that are sitting out there. And if you're not using them, you should get rid of them. You should actually close those accounts. Well, that's uh, a good and, idea. It, yeah. and, you know, figure out which one is best for you. So if it's music services, you know, you have all the different choices. I mean, look at how you actually use these things uh, and pick the one that actually makes the most sense for you. You know, whatever that may be, Spotify, Pandora, whatever. Um, the other one is just kind of based on something I, 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 I don't want to call this an epiphany because this is an incredibly dull thought. But I... It, it did occur to me late in the year after spending a lot of time um, investigating these do-it-all kind of all-in-one transforming computers that we're also big on in the Windows world these days that, you know, maybe the best approach really is to not worry about that kind of thing and just use the tool that makes the most sense for you from a hardware perspective. And so in my case, if I'm traveling, I, that means an ultra book for work because I work, you know, I, that's how I work. I type 
Um, I can bring a mini tablet along for entertainment and so forth. And of course, you need a smartphone. And I think we spend so much time trying to bend the way that we work to match the requirements of these devices, whether it's adding a keyboard to an iPad or, you know, packing your bag full of, you know, this, these device types that don't necessarily make sense for what it is that you're doing. And so um, just kind of looking honestly at the hardware in the same way that you should be looking at your services and all this other stuff I just mentioned, uh, you know, and picking the things that make or sticking with the things uh, that make the most sense for you. So that was uh, 30 seconds of how to change your life. And um, I hope, <laughs> hope there are no questions. Good luck. But, and Yeah, uh, good luck. And see you next year. See you next year. <laughs> now give us a software pick of the week. <laughs> um, I just wanted to mention again, just for the updates time, uh, that uh, every month Microsoft gives away two games to Xbox 360 users who have an Xbox Live Gold subscription. Um, and the first of those two just came out, and the next one comes out on the 16th. But uh, this month they just happen to be Sleeping Dogs and Laura Croft and The Guardian of Light, which are just kind of random games. I actually have never played either one of these titles, but... Um, I do think it's a cool benefit, and if you're already paying for this thing, uh, these games both retail, I think, for $19.99 or $14.99. Um, and some of the games they've given away over the you know, last several months have been incredible. Uh, Gears of War was one of them, one of the Halo games and so forth. So, um, Is it too late just to, clear, be sure. to claim last month's benefit? Or? No, yeah, it is. So you have that's what I mean. You, you want to be sure to get in there twice a month because the, the first half of the month you get one game, the second half of the month you get the, the second game. And so you should be paying attention to this every month. I just wanted to bring it up again because I probably used this in the past, but it changes every 14 or 15 days. So uh, just be sure that if you have a 360. No, I have a 360, and I, but I have an Xbox Live account on my Xbox One. Yeah, so it's the same account, but they don't have Xbox One games that they're giving away right. at this time. So right now it's still on the 360. So um, if you think you'll have any interest in playing any of these games, I mean, it's just something to pay attention to every month. Or as Mr. Mike so says... Should. I have an OG Xbox. An OG Xbox? Original gangsta. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's, like a, it's a rap thing. You just wouldn't understand. Um, Sleeping Dogs now and Laura Croft and the Guardian of Light later. Which, by the way, to Laura Croft is like that Halo game you were talking about, kind of a top-down looking thing, not a... When it comes to Laura Croft, I don't mind. <laughs> well, she's kind of, she's like a tiny little sprite in this game. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so, it's like the Mario Princess. <laughs> Top down used to be great, but I feel that it's um, yeah. We've it, once you've run around in a real world and that um, stick, yeah. That's all they could do in the old days. Feels like we've gone back to what, what the original Duke Nukem or you know. <laughs> yeah, sideways scrollers. Yeah, sure. Our enterprise pick of the week from Mary Jo Foley. Yes, this was one that kind of snuck out during the holidays, too. Uh, if you go over to Microsoft's Office 365 technology blog, they did a post on December 19th about some new abilities they've added to switch between Office 365 finally. plants. This is a big finally, because they, they talked about this in August, and they said, we're going to make it easier for you to switch plans. And they made it a little bit easier in August. They made it easier to switch within plans, but now you can actually switch between plans. So if you're a small business subscriber, now you can switch to either midsize or enterprise. And if you're a midsize business, you can switch to enterprise. The, the caveat here is once, once you switch up, you can never switch down. Oh. So be sure that you want to be a mid-size plan or an enterprise plan because once you're up there, you can't go back. But yeah, I there's a the whole post. One when, before they had a yeah. business edition. Right. Yep. And, and people who were trying to switch before, they were having that like take, take down the whole thing they had built up and, and move tenants onto a new server. It was, it was a big mess. People were always complaining about it. So if you go to this post, they, they walk you through step-by-step step, um, how you can actually get into the switch plan feature now on the licensing page. It's good. Very handy. Thank you, Microsoft. And finally, normally here we would have a code name of the week, but this rumor is too good. And it's kind <laughs> of about code names anyway. It is. And it's kind of a crazy one. So I'm, I'm going to premise this with, I got this rumor from a source who has been somewhat accurate in the past, but not always. And the, the rumor was, what do you think Microsoft's official name for Threshold will be when it comes out in 2015? So, you know, a lot of people have been debating, what, what will Microsoft finally call that thing? Um, and 
the, the tipster says, count how many letters are in the word threshold. One, there two, are nine. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Windows nine. That's what the tipster Whoa. says. That's and, you know, I got to I would not be surprised if this is true, because if you think about the reception for Windows 8 so far, it's been not probably what Microsoft wanted. So why not just change the name when you're up to the next major release to Windows 9, just like they did with Windows 7, right? They said, hey, this isn't Vista. This isn't that old thing anymore. This is a whole new thing. So that's I don't know if this is true just from one source with a mixed record, but it could be and true. A, and a numerological bent. It's kind of a crazy one, but it's one of those things you're like, yeah, they could do that. Why not? I guess. I yeah. guess. Yeah. I guess. And that may not even be the reason if they end up calling it Windows 9. That just might be a crazy coincidence, right. but still right. kind of fun. Fun tip. And it wouldn't be Mary Jo Foley and it wouldn't be Thursday if we didn't have a beer pick of the week. Oh, uh, yeah. So I... I even though Paul would have hated this beer, I, I drank this beer. <laughs> I, I premise a lot of my beer picks. I could do that, that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I picked this beer because of the bottle, and I had to save the bottle to show you because it's so cool. Can you guys see this bottle? It's got a purple moon reflecting on a placid sea. Right. It is beautiful. And there's no name, apparently. No name. But um, yeah. it's from a brewery called Omnipolo, which is known as a gypsy brewer gypsy brewery which means the brewers go around to other breweries all over the world and they use their facilities because they don't have a There's dedicated a thing facility. wow there is Thought and these guys are me. really cool. <laughs> <I know>. <laughs> <laughs> do they play the no. violin while they do it dance do <laughs> the light of the moon <laughs> well the, this beer is called and i'm probably going to massacre the name here fat fata morgana morgana oh fata morgana you know who that is fata morgana. it yeah. means oasis right so this is this label is supposed to be an oasis in the desert, Ooh, and a, this is a, a double IP. It's a mirage. Yeah, a mirage. Sorry, yeah. I said oasis. I meant yeah. mirage. Yeah. Um, a, it's um, a double IPA. It's uh, like one of the brewers was his roots are back in Ethiopia, so he had a lot of affinity with desert things, and um, I, that's. I, I was just thinking that's one of the reasons I think beer is so fun because there's all these weird fun stories and fun names and. Um, it's almost like code names. I think that maybe that's why I like it. Another yeah, and that reason. explains the moon over the sea. That's a that's a Fata Morgana. Right. Wow. So yeah, it's a it's the beer is starting to get around. Um, I got it at Whole Foods. This bottle. Um, so they if you see it, they have a really good beer selection. I'm always they have amazed. a really good beer. Selection. Yeah. Yep. Um, so if you like double IPAs, I would highly recommend this one. Although I went in there the other day and I said, "You have the shoof," and the and the <laughs> beer guy, the buyer, said, "What? I don't know that." <laughs> And that did not <laughs> encourage. Not. I could buy Lachouf locally in a number of places. Yeah, that uh, worried me a little bit that he didn't even know the name. Right. Maybe he <laughs> thinks of it as Chufer. Actually, the, the place we usually buy beer has uh, like three Schuf beers. You know, they have Lachouf and Mixchouf and whatever the IPA is. You know, we had, and I didn't open it because I didn't. I, would, I knew I would drink it if I did, a um, magnum of Chimay Blue for nice. midnight. <laughs> That's oh awesome. wow! Yeah, I gave. Uh, we ended up giving it, I think, to uh, Ryan Marsh, our lighting guy, our gaffer. Nice. Um, nice. Yeah, he was very happy about it. I bet. Yeah. All the Chimay's are fantastic. I love Chimay. Is blue better than red, or is just different? Hmm. They're just different. I think they're all great, and they have that anniversary <laughs> one they do around the new year that is also fantastic. Yeah, yeah, I'm a fan. By the way, breaking news: Alicia Keys no longer represents BlackBerry. <laughs> <laughs> Of the mighty Surprising. This was, this was I hope a, she can bounce back from this. A job loss she didn't really regret. Mm -mm. <laughs> and I did mention that the middle class can no longer afford Red Lobster. I did I did say that, didn't I? Okay. Yeah. Very important story. Yeah, we're still reeling from that one. I, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to think about that. <laughs> Meanwhile, mm. a storm will affect millions later today, and I hope it doesn't disable mm. Mary Jo or Paul Therott. I could just imagine eight feet of snow in front of the front door, unable to exit. <laughs> Panic ensues. Yeah, it's not looking good. Uh, can you what? Sh show, give us one more shot out the window. It's so Paul. dark. I don't know if you could even uh, see. I know it. it's dark. Pitch it's four thirty. It is pitch dark outside. <laughs> oh, look at that! Oh, the weather outside is frightful. Inside, it's sure delightful. 
Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. It looks like it's not snowing anymore, though. Yeah, it's, it's... I think it's supposed to hit here a little later. Yeah. So no snow yet? No snow yet. No snow The heavy yet. stuff's happening overnight. That's kind of the story of my life. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have concluded the last when, uh, Thursday episode of this show. We will be Wednesdays from now on, uh, starting next week, January 9th. Um, January 8th, actually. Uh, right. Paul Therat is still the man in charge at the Super Site for Windows. WinSuperSite.com. Please check him out there. Mary Jo Foley is at AllAboutMicrosoft.com. Paul's books are, of course, at Amazon. Just th search for Therat. But pay particular attention to his last two, which are available online. WindowsPhoneBook.com. Mm -hmm. And don't tell me. Windows... <laughs> I don't remember. 81book.com? Yes. There is there seems to be a naming convention. I should probably remember this from now. Yeah, on. it's it's uh it was written by a dullard and designed <laughs> to be remembered by anybody. <laughs> so and the Delphi 3 Super Super Bible which is on display right over his head. <laughs> yep. Like the sword of Damocles. Yeah. You wouldn't want that to hit you in the head. Uh, thank you, guys. And again, once again, thank you for being part of our New Year's Eve festivities. It was really great to have you. Uh, Thanks yeah, for having me. It was a do. lot of fun. Well, I think what people really liked was seeing um, our hosts out of context, doing stuff other yeah. Well, Paul playing Call of Duty is not exactly Yeah, it was context. pretty much you're just seeing me. <laughs> <laughs> but it's fun for them to see uh, that, you know, other stuff. People love you guys. And so uh, it was really fun. We, we've already decided to do it again next year, but I won't call you yeah, so early. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mary Jo. Thank you all for being here. We'll see you next time on Windows Weekly. <laughs>